Okay. Here's something. I don't typically build... In fact, I've never built a small form factor thermal nope box because I'm not a serial killer. Anyway, here's my selection. I'm going to judge that. I went for like camera ready screwdrivers. I got some gnarly. Do you have some gnarly screwdrivers at home? <laughs> I have some screwdrivers I've had. And they're just like burnt, you know, and soldering marks and stuff. These should be fine enough. This is all you need. Everyone, make sure you have your static wristbands on. You know, Flying Spaghetti Monster Bless the Boy. There's a guy on uh, Twitch that I see every now and then when I'm browsing science and technology. I respect his hustle, but the dude basically, not even basically, he does a PC build like every other day, and it's the same PC. I mean, I respect it. I respect it. Oh, man. Now, the only thing going through my mind right now is, like, I have no idea how I will ever do a uh, the epic build. Pedro, you got a couple of these? And tweezers? Uh, are we going to need tweezers? All right. Hang on. I'll go get tweezers. If we don't use tweezers, everyone um, blame Pedro. I think i got to fix focal length on this one. Ceramic tweezers, just in case. Science tweezers, man. We gotta establish ground rules here. So back plate first. Do we need to get serious? We gotta roll up our sleeves this early. Sure. You would think Probably what'll happen is I'll break my ceramic. I got some different heads for it, but these are the tweezers that I use in a PC. Why? Non-conductive. And if you lose a screw in a case, do what a normal person does. Turn the case upside down and shake it violently and wonder how the screw manages not to fall out. Have you ever just given up on one of those screws? You're like, you know what? It's in there. I can live with it. I have. Thanks, Biatko. I'm building my first PC. <laughs> on straight and live. And I haven't I haven't even opened this stuff, so... You guys, we're all just here. We're finding out together. This is the incredibly bad idea part of the live stream. Because normally, if I was going to, you know, I'd never done, if I was going to be doing a live stream, I would have, I would have tested all this stuff and made sure everything works so we'd have a successful live stream. Nope, there's no fun in that. And this has been driving me crazy. Like, doing something like this is a horrible idea. Okay. Um... Back plate retention, that's gotta come off. That's not gonna be too bad. Not gonna be too bad at all. So this is our little MSI board. I'm gonna have to rob an SSD out of the Jordan. Well, this is gonna replace the Jordan box. The Jordan box is gonna be a hot spare. And about rectangle is gonna be taking that over. Um, it's got Wi-Fi on it. What else do we got on the back of this little guy? VGA because reasons. Okay, display port. We get Wi-Fi. Okay, a bunch of stuff to disable. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and get doing. New motherboard on stream at work. Yeah. Ah. Fine. Keep your secrets. And I'm going to be a little bit light on uh, torquing too hard down on these things because we're on a sheet of glass. That's what's under this. So you'll have to excuse me being a bit ginger with the uh, <clears throat> down pressure. Who remembers the first um, Ryzen motherboards? I got like the first uh, 
AMD 1700. And it came with like the stock heat sink, uh, which was nice. It was a race spire with a little ring on it and all that. And like step one to install it was to remove the uh, official AMD's own official mounting bracket to install it. I thought that was hilarious. But such was the thing. All right, you come up. Ah. And we do that. Hmm. Hey. Where'd my music go? Still playing. This is really fun. Oh, here it comes. Man, that's a lead up to nothing, right? They're 46 second intro, basic. Hmm. All right. Um, whoop. You know, that's pretty safe. Okay. Oh, this thing's going to be a pain in the ass to mount. All right, I'm down. So, yeah, we got to like hold the uh, heat sink on, then flip it upside down, then put the retention screws in. <laughs> That's going to suck. Huh. Thank you, Pedro. I, I was about to put that side. In here, is it silver? That's fair to do. It's fair to do. You know, uh, it, Pedro knows. Like when you're streaming, half of your brain just checks right the hell out. Oh, um, all right. So I got to do a flippity doodah on this. I got to keep stuff organized. I'm gonna run out of space. Do I need? So we're gonna have to do thermal paste. CPU flip upside. Ah, oh, jeez. Damn it! I don't have side and scissors. All right, I'll be back in a moment. Now we have side and scissors. How do we? Let's do this in stages. Let's get the CPU out. Ouch! Yeah, it's a good thing I brought the side and scissors. AMD 5600G, the most powerful CPU available for, what, like 120 bucks? Oh, this has a cooler with it? Really? Oh, dope. Huh. I had no idea. All right. Uh, I'll put everything back in the box, and when I'm done with it, when I'm no longer using the CPU, I'll put the CPU back in there, like I did with my 1700, and I'll put it on a shelf. And I, and I was like, I collect it. Okay, let's put this in storage. Uh, that and that. Our stealth cooler. AMD all the way, baby. I'm, uh, despite... You know, our favorite Intel shells that own an AMD video card. That um, I've only bought AMD CPU, desktop CPUs, for personal use. I got to throw some qualifiers on there now because I bought some stuff for the studio, like these little Intel machines, just because they were cheap. And uh, yeah, ever since uh, the K5, 
That's all I bought. I, and I even bought Bulldozer, and I knew what Bulldozer was when I bought it. It wasn't that great, but I wasn't going to buy an Intel CPU. And what am I going to buy next? You know, I've worked my way up to Ryzen, to Threadripper. I'm building an Epic PC this year, or in 2023. That's going to be a thing. That's one of my, like, got to get that done. Not looking forward to it. Okay, so... What do we do? What did we do with the thermal paste? I gotta get all the thermal paste in here so it makes good contact. Uh, <sighs> maybe our theorem, like. That sounds like such a massive... The Epic system is going to be a learning experience, so maybe, maybe. Okay, what are we looking for is a little notch, which is hard to see at this angle. Or, or notch. Our notch. See notch? Practically making Minecraft by itself at such a notch. Boop. And we go scooch. Look at that. We're practically done. Take a set of, like, you know, jumper leads, hook it up, and it'll start right up. Okay. Um, yes, Joe, I will say that. I say that as somebody with the, um, Thermal Grizzly on the Threadripper, which I have a Thermal Grizzly uh, pad. The problem with the Thermal Grizzly pad is it's made out of Go Fuck Yourself. So if you look at it too hard, it tears. Like these, I picked the Thermal pad up, their Threadripper Thermal pad, with these, and it tore using these exact tweezers, like my super smooth tweezers. I mean, fortunately, it was didn't like tear in half anything. I was able to lay it flat and it touched and then put it back on. But yeah, this. This, you can wipe your butt with this, and it still be in one piece. Bodge wires. Um, let's make sure we're not cutting through anything terribly important here. These are the kitchen scissors. I don't know why they're the kitchen. They're not even the kitchen scissors. These are the, um, like, dual-purpose laundry room kitchen. They always stay on top of the uh, dryer for no reason. It's one of those items. You have items like that in your house. They don't really have a place, like an official place, but you know where they're always left. And if you move them, dare move them, you will never find them again. It'd be terribly unfortunate. Oh, man. You're going to be a pain to get out, aren't you? I can feel it. Ow. There we go. Um, I mean, if you like putting down modern thermal paste, isn't really going to dry out for the, within the life of the system. I just don't want to ever think about it again. And plus, like when I upgraded from the 1700 to the 5600G on Jackbox, I just took the pad off and popped it right on. And I'm not somebody who enjoys playing around with thermal paste. That stuff gets everywhere. And you do want to be careful with these, though. Uh, they are, like, crazy conductive. I mean, that's kind of what their job is. However, you are... <laughs> this stuff's not bad. 
<clears throat> it's the um, Thermal Grizzly stuff you gotta watch out for. Because I don't know exactly what they use in Thermal Grizzly, but you can buy this. Stuff. I found the um, part number for this at Mauser where you can just buy it in like big sheets for like 20 bucks. I haven't bought it because I don't do a, build a lot of PCs. Okay, so we gotta do. This is the old backplate. Let's do some preemptive organization here, kids. Uh, clear things off. That's going to be... Wait. Wait. Four long screws. What were these for? Um... Where did these come from? I am confused. That's our thermal. Because that's our, um... Was anybody paying attention where these, like, came from? Hang on, hang on. Okay, maybe those are the ones that go in the back? I don't know. Gently tighten the screws, fastening the heat sink. We put that on. Take those off, put these in. No, it's, it's supposed to be these guys. Yeah, right. I know they're the Nocto ones. Thank you, Pedro, but which? See, like, these are the Nocto ones. These guys, right? So my question is, where did the bag of the long screws come out of? Ah, those are the nuts that I tighten on the top? What? Yeah, like, how do you, what do you mean tighten from the top? What? There's no way to get tighten anything from the top on this, man. This is all on the bottom, baby. Okay, I know it's going to be a struggle. Let's just not, no fanfic when we're putting this stuff together this evening. Let's stick with stuff that we know about. So what we're looking for is what did these screws come out of and for what purpose? So that, these guys are going to go in here. That's not going to be a problem. They're going to tighten down just fine. Problem is, Joe, is this is an AMD only cooler. Made just for AMD. I'm not going to lose sleep over it, but I'm genuinely curious. Is they didn't come out of the motherboard? I don't think. Is there anything in the folds of the cardboard? Um, probably more cardboard. Nine. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't see a situ- 
I don't see where I would need them. You know, these are the retention screws that came out. Right? Yeah, it doesn't require mounting parts. Which, that's a, that's these. That's that. I mean... I think we're good. I just want to, like, quadruple check on these things, right? Like, let's be honest. If I wasn't doing a stream, I would have never opened this in the first place. Never would have opened it in the first place. Hmm. Um, okay, we need to think about this, because we can come in this way, or this way, and we're going to have a fiber optic card here. So, where where's, uh, we need some fan headers. Over the round, is that going to reach? That should be enough clearance. Ooh, hang on. CPU fan. Right here. Yeah, let's go with this way. Make sure this thing's uh, reasonably clean. Flatten out. Squish. These are a little bit of a pain uh, to keep centered. I will close this. There we go. Um, how does the camera setup work? How does that look? Does it look okay? Thank you for the 10 bits, Doug. I just saw that. It's like an old tiny window. Maybe, yeah, look good. All right, cool. It works pretty well. I don't. I am putting this part. I am putting this part off. Um, this, this is gonna suck a little bit. Uh, um, is there gonna be a nice way to cheat? See, you see where I'm getting at? This is where the cheese is. Cheese is gonna come into play. All right. Let's get our vent. Let's get our Vintac on. We can cheese it. We can cheese it just a little bit. I'll be happy. Come on, microphone. Turn around a little bit. There we go. I tried to find my um. Journeyman, Countryman headset. I don't know where it's at. I kind of want to find it. Because those things are crazy expensive. Okay. My cheesing plan not gonna work. Come on. Work it. Work for me. Almost had it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. So the working plan is to get the thermal pad on, get this on, maximum squish, then flip and tight. Sound good? It might work. Mmm. Yeah. I guess that's going to be the problem, though, isn't it? Like, the screw retention. I want to have everything just kind of aligned. This is going to be a mess. Why the thermal pad is going to complicate everything. That's okay. We can do this. We 
we can do this. Okay, so that, yeah, let go. Ah, uh, that's not gonna work because I'm gonna need the pressure from, ah, uh, boo. Okay. Okay. Because I, I need the pressure from the um, heat sink to hold this in place. Grr. So what do we do now? This is, is going to be some, uh, oh, I'm going to have to hold that. It, it's like crazy slippery too. If you don't realize, um, that thermal pad. So this, this is going to be some tricky bits. How do we want to go about this? Carefully? Uh. <laughs> Slide. Wait a minute. You know what, Pedro? You might be onto something. I might be able to cheese this a little bit. Hmm. I might be able to slide the motherboard off the desk a little bit and get like a screw or two started. Put that on top. Hmm. problem with starting them all is keeping this perfectly level. Do you think that's the play? I think that's the play. You see how slippery that guy is? We can try it. I have no fear. I'll do so maybe yeah it's the squishing of the heat sinking pad that worries me because this is like a 35 degree slope covered in Teflon That's the part, that's the part that's mess, gonna mess me up. It's like keeping this. Even remotely lined up. That is gonna be the challenge. Do I have what I need to elevate this motherboard? Nope. 
good theory, but nope. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I might just have to try, uh, but it's going to be a bit off camera, <laughs> completely off camera, I think, here, but let's slide it back. I get a screw in and hold it. Uh, I think we're, we're we're in the right direction here. I gotta check some. Okay, these are very finely threaded. We can just get two. Oh, we need. Ah, all right. Hang on. There's a critical flaw. And it's this thing. Okay.
Is that going to be lined up right? Yeah. It might have. Oh no, I want people to backseat. The whole point of building a PC on stream is for people to tell you you're doing it wrong. But do you know, like with a lot of things, like if you've ever built a PC on stream, you would never say that to another person. Let's have a look. So, the best I can tell, it looks like it's reasonably, uh, matched up. Delayed the build? Aw. Pedro, I got LED spotlights on both sides, but. <sighs> Same sentiment. Yeah, I understand. That's what I was doing. And remember, when you're installing these with a the thermal pad, you need to apply enough torque until you hear a snap. That's how you know that the um, thermal pads made proper contact with the um, HSF. double check because like there's some possible way that could have slipped out looks good uh, oh, 
There we go. Credits. Still wonder what these are for, though. Um, is that the best place? What is that? That's system fan. That's going to be CPU fan, isn't it? Yeah, it says CPU fan, so I'm just going to plug it in there. I'm not a stickler with that. Usually, like, the first pass of a build is, like, what fans are plugged into what, and it's like whatever they were close to at the time. I usually will go back and fix it if I'm ever trying to, um... That doesn't go in here. Uh, what do I want to put in here? I want to put the original backplate in there. I want to put a garbage in there. How are we doing on time? 2.30? Alright, not too bad. Oh no. Instructions. Just in case we ever need to take it off. My problem... See, uh, I don't really deal with cable management that much. Like, I just put the cables where they need to go. The leading cause of, like, non-working PC builds is people torquing on their cables trying to make them look pretty. I'm like, yeah, it's a good way to mess things up. Ask NVIDIA. Uh, but, like, my big hang-up is um, when I'm building a PC, and I'm not doing it here, this is, this is different ideas. Like, it's throughout the house. Like, it'll be in, like, two stories of the house. I don't know how it happens. Do you just go there? Fine, that's where you go. It just goes in there. There, okay, two boxes out of our way. Uh, motherboard stuff. Is there anything in the motherboard stuff box that we're gonna need later? Let's have a look. Because up next is getting this bad boy in the case. What did you give me, MSI? Nope. Ah, backplate. Hey. Is <laughs> that could have very quickly have turned into backplate not installed build. What is a disc? For? Oh, look, Windows drivers or some shit. I don't know. I get, you need that if you have a one of those uh, Tinker Toy operating systems. Oh, more case badges. Yeah, I don't care. All right, we. We've explored that. But we got a back plate. We're gonna put bags. And ha. Huh. Okay, I need to put the back plate screws with that. So we'll put a rubbish. It's not, oh, oh, mystery solved. What did I do with that bag? Oh, there it is. There we go. That makes sense. I mean, even if that's a complete fanfic, it's good enough for me, man. I can roll with it. I should keep this in the motherboard box. While far from a perfect system, my organization is... I keep boxes, and I got some of those uh, YouTuber shelves I bought in one of the spare rooms. And I keep everything, like accessories, with a box, and I just keep it lined up on the shelves. So I don't have like bins to organize things. I just walk over to the thing and I'm like, oh, right, I need the thing out of this. And it's going to be there. You know, if I ever need to uh, put back the original mounts, they're going to be in that motherboard box. I understand if you don't have like a lot of space. That system probably wouldn't work for you, but yeah. Okay. 
Um, I need to put this somewhere where it's not going to knock stuff over. Let's do that. That. Boxes, baby. Uh, case. I got to do a bio break, everyone. So everyone go get something to drink. While I do the same thing. I'll be right back. Wait, do we need to type BRB? Can I do that? Do we get like a text thing? Da, 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 da. Yeah, we do. Uh, what should our text thing say? Be all right back. That was quick. All right. Uh, I need to still put this somewhere where I'm not going to kick it. I'll put it back here. Pedro, did you get that email from the um, somebody offering us like an early access demo for like Praise the Sun or something like that? I meant to forward that to you if you didn't get it, but I, well, you know, whatever. I was gonna forward it to you anyway. You did not. Mm. Yeah, I'll forward it to you. So we need to go with the case now. All right. Um, let's get our science scissors over here. And motherboard. Over hard. Yeah, that's what we made. Case. Here it is, boys. Er. Came in a bag. This is on our theory. Fortunately, this build, we only have two people to throw under the bus, and that's Arthurin and uh, DSN Joe. So if the RAM doesn't, if the computer doesn't boot, it's just fold. And if it catches on fire, we'll blame Arthurin. How do we get into this guy? Uh, oh, man, classic. Classic. Okay. We need some tunes. Jeez, what mood experimental crap is this? There we go, that's a little more soothing. Man, this is uh, this is this is like old micro ATX steel case. So I'm sure I will be bleeding profusely. Any moment now. Well, I think it's a bit childproof, so it could be a minute before I'm able to get it. There we go. Hey, all right. It had a safety lock on the back then. If you want to keep something safe for me, you know, put a safety lid on it. I'll never figure it out. Uh, let's move that all the way back there. So this should give us access to the inside. And I'm going to... Hey, man. Link. Any good engineer, I just immediately started... It didn't open, so what did we do? We took out more screws. Maybe I didn't need to take that one out. No, I'll put it running back in. There we go. Look at that. Um, ah, oh, it's got that thing. Neat. Okay. That's going to be interesting. Because uh, I am going to have to modify one of the fiber optic cards uh, and put one of the low-profile brackets in it. That is full of power holes. It's got a fan in it. See that little guy down there? What is that? Is that 80 millimeters? It's been so long since I've seen an 80 millimeter. That's a CD-ROM caddy, and I guess we could put the SSD right about sure. Does this lift out? Screws. It's probably going to be screws. Uh, that is most certainly not 92 millimeters. 
It might not show up on camera. If you were looking at it, you would not mistake that for uh, 92 millimeters. If anything, it's small than 80. Yeah, classic power on um, SF, whatever it's called. This could be a common failure point for the case, but what else? We'll replace it if we need to. I'm a swimming. Does that lift out anybody? Yet? What is this? Oh, that just takes the case out. It's got feet, it's got screws, it's got a little metal thing. I don't know. Flex ATX, thank you. I guess it's the guy you furiously masturbate to every night as much as you try to pretend you don't know him. I mean... We gotta get into these. Hey, all right. That is some little bullshit screws. I'm gonna lose these. Oh, do we need to take the need to? Are we going to? <laughs> yes. Okay, that, that's going to come off. Look at that designer faceplate. Oh. There we go. ASMR with old men, Ben. I thought it was going to be like a, uh, what do we got, power led? What do we get dual power leads for? This is like extra power lead? Bring a friend? Power switch, HDD leads. All right, not a big deal. That's going to be something to hold you down. There. And um, USB, front USB. Man, this thing is fancy. HD, that's not getting plugged in. And, um... Is that like a USB 3? I guess that's USB 3 header, isn't it? I don't know. I'll shove it in something that looks like that anyway. Standoffs in place, maybe. What do we have for standoffs? Yeah, the HD auto note. Aren't we supposed to rock and roll with the... Uh... Those are the mini ITX positions? What do you mean? Use your words constructively. Like these metal bits? Ah, the two metal sandals. Do these get to hang around? Do I need to do anything with them? Like, do you even put... You even put standoffs in these things. I have questions. They don't have fear I'd leave them. Alright. I don't want them touching anything, though, man. I don't want them shorting anything out, right? Was, uh, that and that, that. 
Oh no, it looks like everything's gonna be. All right. All right. We should be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did the, uh, you know, hover align. We all know that move. No, I just had a bag full of goodies. Didn't I? Mm. Let's cut into our prize bag. Let's see what we have. More bags. Screws! Oh, God damn it. See, you don't want to find out what this is for, right? Look at those screws, man. Those things are... This is a smorgasbord of screws. I'm going to go on the operating assumption that these are going to fit one, two, three, six. Eight, possibly. Let's go with eight. There. Now I'm going to switch back. None of these bags are resealable. Lovely. I'm just going to put this in a pile, a nice organized pile of stuff to knock the hell over later. And spend the afternoon cleaning up off the floor. But I need to find a safety uh, spot for that. Which is going to be in the Noctua case. Carefully organized. There we go. Done and done. You know what? It's not a for the price, man. What's this thing like a hundred bucks with a power supply? Like. If it doesn't just immediately spark off and like melt the motherboard and everything else, it's good value. You know, again, it's purpose built. I don't think anybody goes up and goes, man, they see one of these and they're like, oh boy, that's coming home with me. I'm going to put it on my desk. How many people here put your PC on your desk so you can have it making noise right next to your head? Some people really like that. I've never got into it. Okay, does anybody need some, like, surgery done? I could probably do it scar-free with this. Need a diamond cut? Uh, three on this side. All right, there we go. We has backplate. All the lights are off. I love it. Now here's her real question. Have you ever done a build and forgot the back plate? I have. Raise my hand right now, man. I've absolutely done that. 
And did you go back and add it later? No, I did not. Somebody still has that PC. Well, they probably have tossed it by now, but... Hmm. Nope. Out of sight, out of mind. I didn't worry about it. I just put a quilt over it. I'm like, yeah, alright, I'll look at it. Oh, man. Um, all of my PCs are on the floor. All of my PCs have filters for air intake and exhaust. All right, so I guess we... Uh, we're going to try to boop this little guy in here. Let's see if the motherboard fits at all. How about that? Uh, well, yes. Uh, I don't know. I, I You'd have a tough time making an argument saying it's less dusty at higher altitudes. I'm like, eh. I don't, it doesn't matter if it's dusty or not. Um, air filters. I filters on all your fans. Like, doesn't matter. How cheap they are? I'm going to reach down here. Ah. Uh, these guys, like I buy packs of them, they're magnetic, metal mesh, slap them on. <laughs> right? We already have supercomputers in our pocket. But you try to tell that to the hipsters that want to carry around laptops. That's going to be a tight fit. Yeah. All right. So we got to come in from the back. <laughs> That's going to be snug. Camera head bump. We're not too far off. Oops, it's in. That was far less dramatic than I was, uh, way less dramatic than I was expecting. I wish I could put some screws in. Right. been a lot worse uh it looks like the power cable is gonna that was like the big worry the only complaint i'm read about this case was that the uh, cables weren't long enough to reach but yeah it looks like everything's gonna fit how boring right but hey we might have enough time to uh get linux installed on it if this keeps up i put this in one screw one screw Let's keep that ratio. And screw go here. Screw go there. I'm glad that this came with screws, but I forget it was a couple of builds ago. And it wasn't the screws, it was standoffs. I was building a new PC. You never think about standoffs, and I couldn't find. I went through the entire house. I was like, I was taking apart like old cases, looking. I managed to like scrounge enough to get enough standoffs, but I was still missing like one of the middle ones. I'm like, ah, that's fine. So I bought a box off of Amazon with like 50 of every computer screw in it. Great investment. It was like nine dollars. It's like I got all the standoffs. I got all of these screws. All the other screws. I got thumb screws. 
It's a nice, pe a nice nerdy peace of mind is what it is. M.2 screws. All right, after I have my dollar resistor club, I need that. We could do the dollar M.2 screw club. We send a dollar in PayPal, and two days later, in the post, you get an M.2 screw. Yeah. Like, even if you don't need them, but like one moment when you need, like, a screw like this, or, like, whatever, or standoffs. Okay. Bonk. I know I don't. I felt that. What do we got? We need one, two, two more. Yeah, I gotta find my um, headset mic. If I ever do another one of these. Of course, there's going to be that one, one pain in the ass screw to get to, right? This is where you're like, man, it's a good thing you have magnetic tip uh, screwdrivers. They're like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Too bad. I think this one's magnetic. Death magnetic? No, not even a little bit. Damn it. Fine. Tweezers. Not gonna be that bougie, man. I'm just gonna stick it in there with my little hands. My little tiny hands. See, yeah, this is one of the problems, kids, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> you kinda get the idea? The entertaining aspect of me building a micro ATX? Alright, let's just go back and snug everything. I have one screw left over. Which means... Aha, there it is. Right there. You know what? Here's the thing, man. I got it out of the way earlier because uh, day before yesterday, which was like yesterday morning at like 3 o'clock in the morning, I woke up to the smell of um, something is really hot and plasticky in the house. And I get up and I'm walking around doing the uh, homing... <laughs> open the door to walk in here and I'm like oh shit I was relieved immediately because nothing was on fire but it something was burning man and it was uh, one of my little APC units that I assuming was a victim like the HDMI splitter that got tea in it when I spilt the tea and the tea rolled over and dripped over the side of the desk I think somehow it had gotten into one of the USB chargers on the APC unit. And, you know, this is like a little hundred dollar, you know, three plug with the two USBs. I got one on each side of the uh, these boxes. And it was hot, man, like right where it was plugged in. I'm like, ah, oh, I unplugged it. You, you don't go to bed after that. So I'm like, fuck it. I pulled everything out and got the screwdriver and started, just pulled it apart. And it bit me when I was getting the shell apart. And of course, like the little board that plugs into the uh, APC, it had it looked like corrosion. I couldn't clean it off. You know, I hit it with contact cleaner and like scrubbed at it, and I just wasn't feeling like desoldering USB Type A at that time in the morning. And I went back, and of course, I checked, and guess what? What happened on November twenty second of this year? That APC, UPS. Is completely discontinued, so I cannot order that one little board for it. Wop wop. But on the on the upside, on the upside, the studio didn't burn down. Might have added some extra insurance just in case, because I was a little paranoid after that. That's not a good feel. Like I 
if I had woken up... Oh man, we got our first uh, loose screw. Get out. Okay. Take two. No dropsies. There's gonna be dropsies. I can feel it. Yeah, I've never had any problem with APS. Uh, APC? That's, that's what I meant, APC. I got, like, two huge, big, chonky ones in here. Plus another one in the rack and another one on the other side. Like, we can... It's enough to keep five PCs and all the lighting up for about 24 minutes. Which is no small accomplishment considering one of the PCs is a mothering thread ripper. Hmm. Ah, man, I just like. This is that pain in the ass screw. Am I going to be able to. Grip these with ceramic? No, I'm not. That's like trying to grip glass. Uh, fine. I'll just unplug it. And scooch down in there. There we go. I ordered a replacement. That's just like one of the things you gotta do, man. I mean, we gotta have one, so. All right. There we go. That's gonna fit in there. Case fan, power. Okay, that was a little freaky. Because I got some LED lighting, yeah, like floodlights coming in on both sides for the shot, and it was it's hitting the front panel LED, which like lit it up from the inside. I'm like, ah, oh, the hell's that? Um, do we have any like rando cables? So have we decided what the fuck this is? That, that's USB three. Oh, get wrecked. That's never going to happen, is it? Ugh. there is. Nope. So we're not going to have USB 3 on the front of this case, but he was wondering. That's not going to work. Okay, so where do we want to get started? I guess we should put the RAM in. Right? Oh man, do I got any open that motherboard? Yeah, because we only get two sticks of RAM, so we're going to go... Almost guaranteed we're going to go here and here. But we're going to check anyway, because there's a 1,000%. But usually the APC is not going to jerk you around if something happens. Um, I had a problem with an APC battery. And the batteries I have for that 1,500 unit are crazy expensive. And the battery was under warranty. And APC overnighted a battery with a return label. Like, it was one phone call. And they're like, yeah, don't worry about it. We got it. Like, that's what they do, you know? That's what you pay for. All right. Uh, memory wrap. Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4, the... Retro memory technology. Where's the motherboard box? I don't remember. Did this come with a manual? Probably. Maybe. Who threw all this trash in? Hey. Mm, well, we don't really get a manual manual, but quick install guide. 
Yes, I know how to install the REM. What I need to know is... Which REM slots? Dick move, MSI. Dick move. Now I gotta look that up online. Uh, Pedro or somebody, could you uh, give me a link to the MSI B550 Pro VDH? Wi-Fi PDF. The, the, this one. Hang on. Wait, no. Maybe. Holy shit. Uh, my Korean's really not good. What are you trying to tell me, Lassie? HG, PCB, PD... Yeah, that doesn't... That doesn't help anything. Oh, this is just safety information? You know what? If I want to lick the RAM sticks, I'll lick the RAM sticks. Thank you, Pedro. You're so cute. Um, hang on. Uh, copy link. Internet. Google Chrome beta. Keyboard. All right. If you guys want to play along, I should have a browser shot. I think I have a browser shot. Let me see. Game review. Vivaldi browser. Boxfire. All right. Um. Here we go. That's what we're looking for. Um. A two, B two. The M A two. So I'm assuming left side is closest to the CPU, right? Uh, that's what I was thinking. I was making sure there's no like, uh, like LOL JK, right? Yeah. All right. So that's going to work like I thought it was going to work. I always check these things, you know? Why not? Doesn't hurt anything to take a peek. And you can sleep better. Knowing that your RAM's in the right holes. Corsair. That looks like it wants to peel off, man, but it doesn't. Um, is it possible to put in DDRM backwards? Yes, with enough force. I've done it. Not with the hammer. With these hammers, yeah. Um, didn't do any damage to the motherboard. Sparked the RAM, pulled it up. I'm like, huh, how did I do that? And it was short enough, I chipped it on the other side. I just wasn't paying attention. Too much left to do really before we try to power it on plug some usbs in 
route the power, which means this is going to go over the top. And that's going to be in like that. Ah, VRMs. Do we even have extra power connectors for that? That's something we should inspect, right? Oh, that rubber band looks a bit dodgy, but I think it's just the color, not the age color. That's the color scheme of, like, that's going to snap and bite the fuck out of you, isn't it? But no, that's just like they've chosen to be dicks. That's not age. All right, what do we have? Uh, power, power. So we got the PTAs. Do not want to line up at all. Come down. No. <laughs> Man, my ability to care is running out so fast. Do this one out of time. I don't know. Uh, pasta coloring. Like, do I even need the bonus power for this? Is that going to be optional for this motherboard? If I don't have to bother with it, I'm not. Um. Do, 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 do. Yeah, mayhaps? Uh, CPU power one. Lovely. Uh, I need all four, so I gotta use these bad boys, which don't want to stick together at all. individual clippy boys. I mean, it doesn't matter as long as they get in, but still it's a pain in the ass. Can I just slot you in there? Hey! All right. Is there anything else I need to plug it in that general direction? No? Okay. Is everything keyed? Yeah. Alright, mouse, you gotta go. Bye, mouse. Okay, that's square keyed. Again, it falls into that, uh, that'd be a lot easier to do without dodging a camera and at a weird angle. <laughs> but where's the fun in that, right? Uh, okay. So we're gonna, you'll notice the cable management's nice and clean, going directly across the board. So I'm gonna cable, ooh, damn it! Um, hmm. Boop. Look at this cable management. Yes! Pro! The likes have never been seen. That's going to be a pain in the ass. Get back in. Um. There we go. Well, I'm, there's going to be a fiber optic card right here. A 
So there, th there's your cable badge. Okay, where's Mr. Clippy? Where do we want this one to bend at? I guess down like that on the face. Right. Hmm. I think that's going to be okay. Yeah. Should be fun. The front panel header is under where the power cable is going to go. What? I wouldn't need this. These guys? Oh man, this thing's got an LED switch on. Look at that. What's that thing? Fog. Oh, it's got... It's got RGB headers. Why didn't we get RGB? Pedro, are you talking about JFP1? You just need to get plugged the hell in, so I'll deal with you. All right. What page is that on? LED switch JFP1 component of Are you just not going to tell me? Come now. Buzzer power led area, area. All right. So, if you're wondering what I'm looking at, that's what I was looking at. Page 32, everyone. Well, nine reserved. Power LED, power switch. Should we plug them all in? I guess we should plug them in, right? Okay, let's see. We got our missing pin. We'll start with that, because that's always the... Uh... You guys want to get up close and personal? We can try that. I don't know if it'll work. Let's see. What? Yeah, it kind of works. All right. Remind me to zoom out because I'll straight up forget. It's that little bastard. Is our starting point. So negative positive is the power switch. Why do we have brown and white for a fuck mothering power switch? Is it gonna zoom back? Hey, look at it focusing. Um, orange with the contacts? So we're just gonna go with white's negative? Does that sound good for everybody? Yeah, but it's principle. Pedro, because power LEDs are clearly blue and white, right? Hard drive LEDs, however, are red and white. 
So I'm operating on white equals negative. Power lad. Should have plugged that in first, but I didn't. So. We do that and then we need HDD lead. All right, I think that is uh, allegedly together. If not in the correct spot, frighteningly close to it. First thing we flip if it doesn't immediately power on. Boy, man, I should have put these. Ah. Okay. Damn, Daniel. Okay, you go over there. Then we're just gonna yeah, smoothly force these under there. Man, you gotta have the HDD blinks. You gotta have the, it, it, you do with SSDs. In the old days when we had mechanical drives and they would whir and click, 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 I could live without it. But now, like sometimes you don't wanna bring HTOP into the relationship. You just wanna look it down and be like, hey, are you doing anything? Okay, we have HD audio, which I did not need to route, but it's just gonna hang out because uh, USB, where's the dead? JUSB 4? It's going to go R. Possibly if I got that lined up correct. There we go. Like a glove. Made of ham. I don't know what the fuck to do with these. Um, Cable management. There we go. Look at look at the management. Is it? Well, the card. All right. It's gonna get dicey when we put the uh, network card in there. Yeah. We should be good on that. Because we still got we got to put the smashy lid thing on it too. Um. We should be close to a... Uh, Let's see if the damn thing powers on test, right? I'm going to need... Ethernet cable... Not Ethernet. Jesus. HDMI cables. Is there anything obvious I'm still missing right now? I'm not, I think that's everything we're going to need. To start a small fire? Possibly. Recent motherboard, it shouldn't have a problem with the 5600 here. I'm gonna need a keyboard and mouse. Mouse. How brave am I? Not that brave. Yeah, I'm gonna get a keyboard. Like I could just plug the ones in I have in the uh, thread book. SATA cable, I'm going to rob that from your box. Yeah, I, I think we just do a power on to the BIOS right now. Let's do that. Let me go grab an HDMI cable. We'll do a power on to the BIOS and see if we get, if we get signal.
We're gonna need a power cable. Where are we? There we go. Uh, power, power. It's ready to trip some fuses. Plug that into my five hundred dollar uh, capture card until I know it's not spitting flames out of the end. Exactly, exactly. We, we we want to think about this for a second. Let me uh, plug this guy in. breathing time we've already been over this by power APC got me it's fed the room has fed the all the uh, blood vibes for the blood god oh snap oh snap Making that new PC smell. Ah. Uh, okay. Lit on one. It's not going to be a butt. Wait, it's... Is it... Probably gonna have to plug it into a monitor to be honest with you. Uh. Yeah, let me plug it into a monitor. Hang on one second.
it says out of range. No fire yet. Looking back here, seeing if the monitor is going to blink to life. We got a BIOS. We got a fathering BIOS, kids. All right, hang on one second, and I'll get you. Uh, let me. I'll move the camera so you can see the BIOS. That's a bit on the dark side, but we get BIOS. So that means actually, I want to try something. I want to try something because I think I can get you guys a uh, like clean feed. Of BIOS. Be patient. Take a break. It might take me a minute because I'm gonna play around with HDMI cables. That should be on Black Magic Device too, maybe. Maybe I have to unplug. That experiment is... Yeah, it doesn't like the uh, BIOS video, unfortunately. Damn you, Black Magic. I wonder if I can... Ah, oh, see if I knew what the... Um... What am I looking for? Uh, the horizontal vertical refresh output of the BIOS. Well, so I could 
I could make it work. Honestly, I could probably make it work on the um, Intensity Pro. Honestly, it'd probably work with the uh, cheap USB capture card, but it's not right now, so. It's one of the downsides with the Blackmagic cards is they genuinely expect broadcast signals. They don't expect 1080p60, they expect 1080p59.9. Oh, replay, what's going on? Haven't seen you in a while. So, this is running. Let's have a look. Um, I guess we can go back to like option two with Vive. I'll get a video signal to you guys in just a minute. Yeah, it's at 28 degrees. That's not bad, is it? Is this little fan? Oh, that fan's not plugged in. We might need to plug that fan in, too. Uh, DDR speed is 2133. Oh. Ah. Uh, where do we go now? Easy light. Oh, I gotta cut all that crap off, too. Alright. <clears throat> USB holes in the back. How do I want to do this? You guys want to see the BIOS? I guess you do. There's a fan header next to the ATX power connector. Yeah, right up here. I'll plug that in in a minute. Um, I really wish I could get this BIOS thing on the screen for my own sanity so I didn't have to look behind me to try to do it. Uh, like, I, I'm really tempted to just, like, run down all of the... Um, like whack, whack a doodle. Um, video formats and see if I could hit something that was like semi compatible. But I don't even think this thing can output anything related to that. In the MSI, but there should be a switch thing. Uh, use your words. What do you mean a switch thingy? For what? We are going to get a keyboard mouse plugged into it. Yeah, I guess I'll just put you guys on. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not my first rodeo with the, uh, okay. There's some real talk for you. The, um, because, uh, That's one of the reasons to stick. I'm going to say one of my reasons I stick with a particular brand of a manufacturer, because once you know the BIOS, you don't want to have to mess with anything else. Hey, we got dribble support. Neat. Um, yeah, give me a second. I'll move the camera over so you guys can see what I'm up to on the BIOS. Oh man, we got some knack in here. Right on. All right. All right. So. What should we do? Uh, XAMP 1 or XAMP Profile 2? You can pick. One or two. Uh, 
I got a two. One. One, we got two for one. One. All right. Let's cut off the raid. Oh, hey. Cut off the lights. Let's cut off the HD controller. Accent profile one. Let's see what that does. Let's see if we get a reboot. Bam, just like that. 3200, 3.9 gigajoules. Now we're gonna do some other stuff. Um, oh boy, let me see. I move that. I gotta be careful. There, there, maybe. I'm trying to read this from the side of a monitor. So that, that's right. Yeah, 32 megahertz. That's all I need, baby. That's all I need. Uh, what are some things I need to do, though? Uh, okay. Uh, integrated. PCI. Should I leave the integrated graphics stuff alone? What what should we do there? Game mode? What about like the frame buffer thing? Disable secure mode? Why would I do that? Well, I know in the um 5600 uh, in Jackbox, I was able to select uh, and give it more video RAM. Uh, disable. Disable. VGA detection. I guess that's going to be fine. Maybe. Think, buddy. All right. Power management. Uh, EPR. We don't care about that. Um, all of that should be fine. USB, all that should be good. Power management, Windows OS configuration. What does IGD do? Yeah. What's the difference between um, PEG and IGD? Full screen on post beat. What are you guys talking about? Uh, peg equals PCI GPU integrated. Okay. So IGD is what I want to be on. Alright. 
game mode, I guess. Game mode! Aha! Found it! There we go, now we're cooking with evil gas kids. Okay, IGD, Force, and 4 gigs. So we'll have uh, 4 gigajoules of memory RAM. Is there anything else? Uh... OC. Uh, CPU ratio, auto, base clock, XM. I think all of that's going to be where we'd want it. Nothing crazy. Settings. Security. Oh, that should be fine, right? We got the hard disk. Yeah. We'll give that a shot and see if it works. See if it cuts back on. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. All right, looks like it did something. Yeah, right? Where's the smoke coming from? So now I need to this looks good. I don't think I, what I got to do now is I got to get we got to put a video card in it. No video card, a network card in this guy. Put a lid on it. Put a drive in it. Hmm. All right. So Plug that front panel in for the fan. And let's see. System fan. System fan goes in the system fan hole. Is it going to reach? Not without taking off this damn thing. Of course not. Why? Why would it do that? Fiber, fan, and disc. We're getting there. Then we're going to shove a... We're going to put De Boyne on it. There we go. Now we got a screechy fan. So that's going to be power. Let me rob the uh, SSD out of Jordan's box real quick. You don't want all that in your box, baby. We'd probably take. We, we'd have to buy all the lube. Uh. So, this is this is the Jordan Drive. I have a stack of these, fortunately. These were like what, fifteen bucks? 
at one point. But a ton of them. So I need a SATA cable. I need to go get my bag of fiber optic cards. And uh, I think I'll put a Mellanox Connect X3 in this one, or Connect X2. Dude, like everybody's got these Kingston drives, you know? Like, they're not great by any stretch of the imagination, but hey, they get the job done, right? So, cheapo cases. Uh, there was a set of cable in the motherboard box, wasn't it? Was there? Fuck, yes, there was. Look at that. Pedro Mateus with the Pro Strats. We only need one. So, there we go. Get close. Oh. All right. What about the optical bit? You mean where I'm going to tape this? Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, that optical bit. Because if you think I'm going to like screw this into a mounting thing, you're insane. These things. This is the reasons I'm not putting an NVMe drive in here is if something happens to this box, hard drive wise hardware or if I need to swap the drive out because I'll just clone this drive. Pop the drive out, reach in, take the drive out, pop another one in. No screws needed. So. And uh, yeah, let me go. I'm going to do another bio break and I'm going to go into the parts room and go grab a bag of fiber optic cards, which I genuinely have a bag of fiber optic cards in there. And we're going to do a little arts and crafts and we're going to make a big one into a little one. All right, we did a quick visit to Uncle Slappy's fiber optic card shack. Let's see. Where do we want to go? Melanox. I think we're just going to go with a Melanox. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Connect X3. It connects X3s. This is a fiber stabber. That's how you the stab transceivers. And the power's unplugged from this guy, okay. Tool is entry. Ta-da! Oh, I gotta remove the, um... Ugh. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. need to come over a bit. It's got a little more flex to it than I'd like to see. All right. There we go. Now we have a fiber hole.
This could cause any problems. The fibre is in. Now we gotta figure out what to do with the um that thing. Yes. <laughs> Importantly, we gotta figure out where the hell I put it. <laughs> Let's put our fiber bag and fiber accessories up first. This thing allegedly goes back on. Somewhere? All right. Hard. That was way easier than I thought it was going to be. All right. Winning. Is that how we're supposed to... Hmm. Hmm. Oh, we gotta run some SATA cables, don't we? Yeah, we do. Why are be the SATA holes? Are they gonna be up front? Of course they're gonna be up front. God damn it. Lovely. Uh, yeah. Like right there, right in front of that fan. I don't know. Like I seriously might need a right angle. Um, Clear that, man. Like, I'm not even joking. Yeah, unscrew the fan. Understood. Uh, but. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need a right angle to, uh. Hmm. Let me go dig around. That's the only way that's going in there, man. Like, the only way that's going. I don't think the other one was right angle, was it? Yes, the fuck it was. How did you get so smart, Jordan? Clever like that. They sneak up on you with that clever sometimes. Okay. And screws that I don't want to break. Bloop. Canadian instinct. I'd go see that. Fan screws suck, by the way, just in case anybody was unaware. Why we couldn't adopt just normal, regular, non-fucky screws for fan screws? No, no. Reasons, you know. Gotta be these big, chonky ones that are a pain to get in and out. Yeah, there's two whole ones. We're not four. Two. Dos. Ein. Mm. So we'll be able to get away with this. Man, jeez. Just. Just. Does that come off? Look at this flex. Like, I could fold this. Like, I could 
twist this. All right. So I am assuming it that does not matter at all, which sat a hole it goes in because there's only four. This is not like an epic PC where if you plug it into the SATA, wrong SATA one, it'll fry your drive. True story. <clears throat> oh, it's still gonna be a bastard to get in though, so don't 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 worry. Uh, oh yeah, this is done for your 100% it is. Like, and to see whether or not we can do it. We are going in the right way, right? Like this thing better, oh, motherfucker, if you're like, Ah. Yeah. That's not going to work. That's not going to work even a little bit. Nope. So I guess that's not going to matter. Yeah. Well, here's the issue. It's got to be flipped around the other way. If I could get the set in like that, it would be fine. But that's not how the set goes in. Like, I might be able to clip it from the bottom and run it under the motherboard. I can route the cable around the top. Yeah, and tuck it under the motherboard. Which involves taking out the motherboard. <laughs> God damn it. All right. That's the only way this is gonna happen. Ah, man. Why don't we just buy an NVMe? Can I stick it through the fin? No. No. This bullshit all the way down, my friends. Can you stick it through the fan hole? Define, help me out with what you consider a fan hole. Okay. So here's the part where I let everybody know the back of the case doesn't come off. It is riveted in place. Motherboard's got to come up, or come up a little bit, in order to do this. And even then, I mean, it should work, right? What's the take? I don't know. Pedro, I want to hear more about your theory about how I don't have to take out the motherboard. I'm serious. Help me out. Oh man, we're making pancakes. So, hang on, let me re-angle the camera.
clip the nut into the motherboard. But I get all this crap right here, man. Like I, I, I like your theory, Pedro. Is what I'm saying. I just don't know if that's going to be. Viable. You see what he means? Can you translate? You shape the cable. What? Like I'm doing? Like that, just clip it in. Okay, I'm going to need... Pe Pedro, I need you to come over here with your little baby hands. Help me out. <laughs> Let's see, I'm going to have to get that lined up. This is, this might be workable. I know, right? This might be workable. It's just getting the alignment without ripping or bending or breaking or just going, well, you know, I don't want to end this experiment with like, well, I guess I should have just took the motherboard off. You get what I'm saying? Those feels? Want to avoid those. Those are not good feels. Oh, if I could just get this damn cable under that. now for man come on mm. are we gonna have fan arrows by any chance probably not that's an n1 fan too huh you may remember which direction the fan was plugged i don't pay attention Ah, here we go. So this is supposed to work as an exhaust fan. Right? Right? I believe so. And that shit ain't gonna fit with the side of cable plugged in. No, sir. Mounted on the back.
Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't need moving fans outside of the case. Huh? Looks like there should be enough. Wiggle room, but I don't want to damage. Yeah, I'd have to cut a significant chunk. That's just going to have to be like that, then. Um... Oh, well. No system fan. What? Okay, uh, I'm not going to live in a imaginary world with that little piss in. This thing is providing massive cooling benefits with this guy. It will eventually get fixed, which means that I am going to have to put an NVMe drive in this little bastard. Or find some type of cable. But until that day, today is not that day, right? Everything else is... so we need power. How do I want to do this? Like that. Is everybody spinning? Ah, that's going to be on top of that, though. Hot mess! Huh? Yeah, Mir, the last, absolute last thing you can worry about in the system is this fiber card. Not only will it outlive all of the components, it uh, can run at nigh the temperature, surface temperature of the sun, and laugh. Okay, let's try not to make too big a mess. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's HD audio. We don't need you. We need power. Is that going to Jenga? It's what? Yeah, it is. All right, look at that. All right, so we can squeeze some of this cable nonsense up in here. So it's not flopping around. I really don't... Oh, this cable sucks. Go away. Hey God. Oh, this is gonna be one of those. This is gonna be one of those cases where you just like shut it. I'm like, all right. There's a little slot back here in the back. Um. On the bottom of what? We gotta we gotta use full sets this year.
on the bottom of this, the long slot closest to me, the long slot closest to this thing. Is that what we're talking about? Just pushing it through the side instead of doing it through like that for reasons? Okay, sure. I'll make you happy. All I'm worried about is that cable. I want to make sure that it goes over there. See, this is what I don't understand about who enjoys this? Like, where are my serial killers at that enjoy building these small form factor PCs? Like, how the absolute hell did I pull that off? Oh, it's got like a little leg sticking out of it. All right, that's not as crazy as I thought I'd meant to do. Securely mounted. <laughs> oh, come on, man. This is this is fun. And like you can decrease the life of every component in the box too. It's got that added, ben added benefit. I mean, like I don't understand how people don't all use these for their PC builds. All it needs is some RGB. Why, so they only die slightly quicker, Pedro? don't get as hot but you're intentionally depriving them of cooling it isn't it is uh not form follows function and again i don't i don't have a problem with it if you if you enjoy building these little thermal death boxes like cool like right on we can still hang out you can come over we can play sonic the hedgehog but you know it just is what it is right it's like a bonsai tree. It doesn't make a damn bit of sense, but hey, man, people do it. I think that's uh, pretty much everything. We don't have USB 3 on the front because... You know what? That'll fit now, but... Um, oh, well. Wonder why I bought these little Dell PCs? This is this is why. Um, they look the same, man. I better put the put, put the lid on it. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know how this thing goes. Does it just like sit in like that? And hey, look at that. All right. Maybe. Oh, da da da. Let's put some Linux on it. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, let's see. How are we doing in the back? 
Plenty of USB-C. Not USB-C, USB 3 holes, HDMI. I need to get a transceiver for the... Uh, and by get, I mean I'm going to rob a transceiver. I might have to rob two transceivers. Hmm. Huh. How's that doing? I got plenty of threat left. Now I gotta think. What's gonna be your next step? Uh, we did it, Reddit. Of course, when I um cut it on, it's not gonna power up next time, right? Oh no, I didn't mount the SSC. It's what's known as a hot swap, hot swappable. So yeah, um, no screws are involved on any of the boxes in the studio. These boxes, because if they die, they're old to begin with, and they're stuff like this. I just need to be able to pull the drives out and swap them out. Um, uh, yeah, I guess we can uh, pop this guy in. Yeah, I do have like one tab. That is catching. Oh, no! Actually, I got one there and one on the network, too. That's not good. I don't like that. We're going to have to fix that. Sorry, everybody. I'll YOLO a lot of stuff, but I'm not going to YOLO that. There's too many pins. With power! Going through them in order for me to uh, risk that. That sucks. Oh well. Hello, Nubbin. You're just in time. Yeah, it will. I understand the bullshit that I'm... I just realized. I'm like, okay. But, I mean, wh what can I do? What can I do? Let's get that this off. Right. Eh. We learn. I'm going to have to scooch the mobo on that. Uh, yeah, there's not a smooth way around this one. I was going to pull all the screws back on. Mm. You know what? Let's go ahead and pull this guy off. Ploop out of fiber card. Yeah, I like I like that way of thinking, Pedro. But I just don't want to tempt it. Kind of want this to be up and running tomorrow. He doesn't understand what Shutbot is yet. Somebody will uh, explain that Shutbot is the bridge between our Discord, IRC, and Twitch servers.
screw you're coming out I just didn't know it yet Right? We found to use for the tweezers, 100%. Okay, is that all the screws? Feels awfully stationary for that to be all the screws. Um, there were eight, two, four, six. Okay, I'm just gonna pull on it really hard. There it goes. That needs scooching. And that needs scooching. I believe that was a successful scooch. Realign everything. All right, that was a clean scooch. We're good. Now we're going to put these all back in. Lovely! Alright. Let's not crank any of these down too tight until we get... But we learned a trick for getting these screws down, didn't we? Yeah, we did. That's not going to be too bad. Hopefully, when we get some um, Linux booting, we'll be able to just like get a like a little pop-up screen. Jeez, I'm pretending. What I'm doing right now, you don't see that this hand is aiming towards the camera on the other side of this room on the wall that is not on right now. Because I am a professional. There we go. I gotta roll the soundtrack up to something... That's going to be a bastard to get to. Lovely. Lovely. Okay. 
go down to three. Is that a boop? That was a boop. That's what it felt like. Oh man, that's like space for days. That, 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 that's practically a full-size tower. Let's be honest. Practically a full-size tower. One screw. We're down to one screw. Where? We got one in the middle. Oh, there it is. There it is. Next to a nice big chunky. Cap. Okay. Ah. Okay, done and done and done. That's good, that's got power. So we're gonna have to fish the power. I think that's it. Like, minus... Minus getting the drive thing back on. You know, I'm sure if we do that three or four more times, I'll be halfway up with it. I saw they um, released like the second trailer for the near Auto Tomato anime. I want to. I want to get so excited for that. I do. I'm cautiously optimistic, as I think it's the polite way of saying it. I think for reals this time. It's not gonna oh no, good. It's got like a little clip thing on it. All right, okay. Van Gogh Burr. Let's move that out of the way. Yeah, I think that that should get it. In one piece, I don't know if I'm gonna find out. If it does or not. Click. 
raised a little bit indeed. All right. So if you haven't kept track of this in any way, which is probably a good idea. This isn't really a Steam box. This is my answer for Steam not making, you know, we have the Steam Deck, right? A Steam Deck is an interesting piece of kit. But it's portable. It doesn't make a very good desktop PC. You know? It doesn't. So this is... I'm impatient. And I, I want to think, like, eventually Valve is going to release, a, like, a Steam Cube. Which will be a Steam Deck without the controllers or a screen built in. You know, it's just like a little cube or whatever. I mean, desktop. This is my answer to that. This is my answer to that, because I needed a small... PC capable of playing a game, and I do mean a game, but it also serves as a WebRTC uh, client for our shows. So we ended up with this. This is a MSI B550M with a Ryzen 5600G shoved in here. And we put it together last week. We put everything together last week, and we had a problem. We had a problem. This was the problem, because down here, I'll show you once I pull this up, there's not enough room to get the fan in with a SATA drive plugged into the front of this thing. That is how tight the space constraint is, and that, that blew my mind. So we have to have this fan in because this thing runs hot. Jellybean, what are you doing up at such an ungodly hour? Steve wake you up? Did Steve stay home today? I know some places in Los Angeles are without power currently. So, let's go ahead and tear into this guy. This is a trusty Kingston drive. I bought a stack of these things. Hey, Alan's up uh, when they were like 19 bucks. These are great. They still work. There's like 128 gig model. And uh, they're not great drives by any performance measure, but I mean, they're good on SS. Good SSD drive. You know, basic desktop computing or just the basic things I need. So this we need to deroute. You do have power. That is awesome. There is nothing worse than being... I don't want to say stuck at home. I don't want to be... No one's really... You know, you're only stuck at home if you want to go out for a particular reason or event. Um, these days, being stuck at home is kind of the norm, isn't it? But being at home with nothing to do or no option to go do anything without power is miserable. Let's see. Ooh, danger. I'm going to spill that. See how small this thing is? Like... With my big goofy clown hands. All right, who remembers how this comes apart? One, two, three. That's how we pull the lid off. It's run very well, though. It's run hot. I've had to underclock it, but I was going to underclock it anyway. I think it's like 4.9 gigahertz is the boost on this thing, or somewhere around there. And I got it down to like 2.9 gigahertz on six cores, just, you know. Okay, tiny little screws, that's right. To keep it nice and cool. And we do have a chunky heat sink. One thing I'm debating on doing, I don't know if I want to do it, is do I want to pull the motherboard out and retorque the uh, retention screws on the back of the Noctua cooler? Would that be a worthwhile thing to do? Because, you know, normally I'll do that after you've installed, you know, be it thermal paste, or I use thermal pad in this case, and you put on a new cooler and you torque everything down. Let it run for a week, you know. Let it go through the expansion contraction cycle while it's heating and cooling, and go back and retorque the screws. They're going to be loose, guaranteed, every single time. Not like crazy, but you'll get like a quarter turn, half turn out of each of them. So I don't know if that's going to be like a worthwhile thing to do on this. What I'm saying is I don't know if I feel like pulling the motherboard out again. That's what I'm getting at. 
this, I need to take a look at this. I think, I think we're just going to pull all of this off to give this thing as much air sucking ability as we can. Because, uh, let's face it, I'm never going to put a CD drive in here. Hopefully. And, um, this is what we have. We got like this super flat little Noctua. Surprisingly affordable Noctua heatsink. It was like 40 bucks. And if you're wondering, that this is at the absolute thermal limit. 5600G, because this thing... Playing a very non-intensive game wound this fan up loud enough to where I could hear the fan. Hearing a knock to a fan mean it means it is going at quite the clip. So we have a bunch of extra stuff that we're not going to need now. Up to and including the SATA cable. So that's going to go away. HD audio is never going to get plugged in. It's not. Because we don't need it. Pull up our sleeves. Let's get serious. Ah, that was a lot easier than I was expecting it to be. Nice. So the goal is, is to get the NVMe drive. I'm going to swap out the fiber card too. And uh, pop that in. We'll put Linux on it. And I have a better understanding about how the GPU integrated GPU works with um, one of my Blackmagic cards, so it should be a better experience than having to point a camera at the screen like we did last time. That didn't work very... I mean, it was better than nothing. Let's, let's just go ahead and say that. Joe, you're back! Yes! Oh, man. How long do you typically get to stay at home? I never get to stay at home. That was my problem. Yeah, if you are watching, Jordan's going to be playing Borderlands tonight at 7.30. I hopefully will be done way before that. So... Do I want to do some advanced cable management? Look at that. Yeah. So this guy's going to come out regardless. This is Mellanox Connect X2, vintage 10 gig fiber optic card. Everything in the studio is fiber for a multitude of reasons. Um, one being price, it's a lot cheaper than running 10 gig Ethernet. Um, reliability. And uh, I can get purple cables. I mean, come on. So we're going we're gonna to replace this with a Connect X3, but I'll have to do a little bit of surgery on it in a minute. Step one's get this NVMe drive in. Two to three weeks? That that that's maintainable. I could maintain that. Um places to put things that I take out. Uh, let's see. Over here. Five months straight. Oh man. If you're still at the point where you like traveling, I was so sick of traveling. Um I effectively lived out of motels for four and a half years at the end. And, um, like, I, I'm done. It takes a lot to get me to go somewhere. I mean, outside of just, like, locally. To get me into a plane to go do something these days. All right, let's see. One of these zooms in, and one of them cuts it off. If anyone wants to keep track of how many times I bonk my head on the camera, can we do can we do a better job with the lighting? Then maybe, maybe. Let me see. That's a little bit better, isn't it? You kind of see what's going on down in there. A little bit. 
What if there were snakes? See, you'd be have a hard time getting me off that plane, man. You won. Did everybody watch the AMD announcement yesterday? Last night, I should say? I had to cut it short. I saw Jill, um, Ogi, and uh, Bisvik were um, doing some practice laps on our Trackmania server for Friday. And I'm like, oh, cool. I would come play for a minute. And, you know, I don't want to hang out too long because that's like hanging out with the management, right? And they were having fun doing their own thing. So I came in and did some laps. And then I saw the... Um, AMD keynote from CES, and I was like, pfft, disappeared, wouldn't watch that. Didn't see anything terribly, you know, they're going to have some non-X series parts, which are going to be pretty cool. Uh, you know, like the mobile GPU stuff, I guess, if you like laptops and mobile gaming. But yeah, nothing earth-shattering. Earth-shattering. Um, nothing really caught my attention. I was like, ooh, I want that. Oh, it's got one of these little nonsense things on it. I guess we're going to use this, right? Might as well. Um, Which one? Is that our NVMe screw? I wasn't paying attention. New APUs. Yeah. Uh, it's cooler and cooler and cooler. We're, we're quickly approaching a world where we can just, like, legitimately... Um, game on integrated graphics which is which is weird man because like i went and got a friend and brought them back to an electronics store the first time i saw a laptop with an nvidia gpu discrete gpu in it because that didn't exist of course i remember walking to the store the first time and seeing a laptop with a color display on it and i like malfunctioned i'm like what this, i didn't think this was possible but here we are. Yeah, the seven. The only thing I'm worried about with the um, new AMD CPUs, especially the what was the X3D one with a uh, 16 cores? Is those things you want to bet? Do you want to bet? And those things are going to be 9.99. <laughs> I I fear they're going to be Threadripper, not Pro, but Threadripper pricing. Okay, so we need to... Whoop, wrong way! Yay! De-zoom. And get this guy in. The pinnacle of NVMe technology. The latest and greatest. Um, yep, that's fast as it gets, right? Gen 3? That's the latest one. It's got four of the Gen 3s in it. <laughs> Let me tell you what this is. I talked about this... Um, last night or yesterday evening, uh, when Jill and myself were doing weekly daily Wednesdays, this, this is 19 bucks. This is what this is. This is from, um, Silicon dash power, a company that I heard of when I realized that they had a NVMe drive for $19. Kind of like this one. Why do I have a stack of these Kingston? I think these were like 15 on sale at one point. It was like two or three years, you know, before the the plague hit humanity. It was just like, why not to think about like six of them just in case drives. Oh, well, yeah. I just realized that Strider here. Watch. Um, thank you for saying that top cam transform. Um, so that's side. Oh, I have it locked. Hang on. Let me unlock it. Do a transform. Boop. See? Hey! Ta-da! Now we have, we've um, de aussie this. So I'm assuming, I haven't looked up any information on this. This is like, I needed a drive to put in here. And this is kind of a butter robot that plays track... Uh, spec doesn't even play Trackmania. It spectates a Trackmania game. And it's also Jordan and Jill's box. Which basically is like, hey, can it run a web browser? Can it run Jack? Or even not Jack. It doesn't even have sound in it uh in a traditional sense we'll be setting that up i should have plenty of them <laughs> don't say things like that if time allows um we'll just get things set up all right let's use our science scissors
Come on. There we go. Scissor action. Scissoring. Hey. All right. These are always so much smaller than I think. There is a long NVMe drive, isn't there? There's a... A, 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 not not very girthy, but a nice long, you know, like at least six inches uh, NVMe drive. Because it's something like that. But every time I, you know, all the standard NVMe drives that I have are like these. They're a little tiny. I forget my little sticks of gum. It's okay. Um, uh, did I wreck the... No, all right. Easy to get to. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah? Warrant. I immediately focus. I think I have it on autofocus. We'll find out, won't we? Warranty void if removed. I want to tear that off so bad right now. That's like the bags of uh, microwave popcorn. It's like, do not refrigerate. I immediately put it in the refrigerator because, you know, I'm a rebel. So punk. Mm. Yeah, man. You got to fight against the establishment. You got you to gotta assert dominance against authority. And, uh... Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hey. Doom and enhance. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say my... This is the Sony A5000 that I had to telnet into in order to hack the firmware. Not a bad camera for a hundred bucks, is it? I think Joe got one too. Um, which one was the NVMe? This one? I think this was the NVMe screw. But I'm very happy with it. This is what I got it for. For something small that I could hang over this big monitor that you can't really see in front of me. And it's like... Whew. And... Here we go. One in VME drive. Uh, uh, uh. I th wait. Oh no, do I have to put the. Oh, boo! All right, never mind. <laughs> Take two. Err. The first time I installed an NVMe drive, I'd never encountered them. And it had that screw that. Um, that's never going to focus, you know, somewhere like that. That had the screw, you know, it, it was basically the standoff of the motherboard. And it had the screw that went in the top. And when I took it out, the little screw never engaged from the, disengaged from the top. So I pulled the whole thing out and I put the NVMe drive and I smashed it all the way down to the motherboard and put the whole thing back on top. And I mean, it was like, and it worked for a minute and, you know, your uh, spidey senses start tingling. You're like, that that can't be right. That's horrible engineering. There's no way. Then, of course, you go look and you're like, oh, right. Flexible little critters, aren't they? Hmm. So, do we have to, like, double stack this thing? Let, let's peel off. That doesn't make any noise. Thermal pads. Ah! It'll never let go. Static electricity. Probably shouldn't be waving that over the top of the case. Oh well. Um, what, does this thing just like boop on like that? Can we do that? I think so. I think that's it. Anything more would be overthinking it. Hey, we got lucky. No, we didn't. 
Sir, could I interest you in finding the receptacle? There it goes. All right. Now I have to put another screw in. I told you, Ben, I'm a rebel. I'm hardcore, man. I don't, I don't, I don't play by the man's rules. And, um, not that I said it, so don't try to blame me for it. But yeah, I mean, that, if you want to see somebody who's never built a PC before, and you know what? It's good that they're at least, that shows that they're trying to pay attention. I've never worn my entire life. And let's be a static wristband and just be perfectly clear. Just because I've been doing something a long time doesn't mean I'm good at it because I hate somebody who says, you know what, I've been doing this profession for 30 years. And I'm like, that does not mean you're competent. Not at all. Not even a little bit. So maybe I've been building PCs the wrong way my entire life and I'm just this is just like one of those times where I got lucky. Um, okay, now we gotta get, see if we can get this little evil fan in. That's gonna be our next goal, is to shove a fan right in here. First guy. 15 millimeter. I have no idea how loud it's gonna be either. Uh, airflow. Uh, okay, this has to work as an exhaust fan. And it really does. This thing immediately gets hot. You would have never in a million years imagined, um, this thing having thermal issues on such a spacious case. But look at this. It fits now. Hey. Uh, and I've saved the screws. They've just been sitting on the desk the entire time because since last week, this has been running with a side panel off. Mmm. Toasty rectangle in this studio in my house in the wintertime where it, it genuinely has to be about if I'm here by myself, I won't even think about cutting on the heat until it gets down to like six, maybe five, then I'll think about it, but usually I'm fine. I like being cold. I don't like being cold. That's wrong. I shouldn't say I like being cold. I like being chilly to the point of borderline cold where I can get a nice hot cup of caffeinated beverage, be whatever it is. And like, if I'm sipping on it, then I'm like, mm, I'm perfect. That's, that's my happy, happy spot. And I do the same thing in the summertime. That's why my power bill is so outrageous in the summertime because I, I abuse the AC. All right. Fan screws. I talked about this last week. We need to fix these fan screws. These fan screws suck. They've sucked my entire life and they will continue sucking probably until the end of time. I don't know why. They're... These big chunky threads. It just feels like you're... Ugh. It's not a good feel. I'm sure there's a reason for the threading on the fans. I don't know. I kind of feel like the reason we have for the threading on the fans is somebody cocked it up in the beginning and no one's wanted to own up to the mistake, so we just run with it as a society at this point. Um, do you know what? Like, not in LA. I've not spent too much time in LA. Um, but I spent a couple of months in Oakland. Like, I was fine with Oakland weather. Like, it was pretty neutral. It's like 15, 16, might get up to 18. Like, if I'm out and about, but like in the wintertime, I, I, I want to have a sweater on, you know?
And some people just really do like it toasty. I mean, Strider's probably the type of person where it'll be like negative eight outside walking to Strider's house. Strider's walking around in a pair of um, booty shorts, barefoot, like, you know, drinking a uh, slushy. And that's cool. No, Strider, you don't do the nudist thing. We just uh, established booty shorts. Okay, now we have the exhaust fan. We got to do a little bit of surgery, too, though. Skeech! Because this, this is not long for this world. That's really restricting the airflow, brah. Um, I want to just... What do you mean, one of them? Oh, no, I need it to... Cl oh, you evil bastards. Um, okay, so I do need it so the front face will clip on properly outside of that. So that's going to come off. We're going to put the good fiber card back in it, um, which I have in a box because it's still in here. Just give me one second. Let me go grab it. Uh, maybe. There we go. Okay. Well, where do I put you? I gotta do a little bit of surgery. So we're gonna set rectangle down. On the floor, it will be perfectly safe. And we are going to adapt. Actually, just put this guy back together, really. Oh no, we gotta swap it back out, right? We gotta go from long short. And I think I can scooch this guy back in. Maybe, possibly. I'm persistent. Come on. I only need you to go in just a little bit. This is absolutely not the right case. Well, I don't have the right adapter for the You know what? I do have the right case for this, so we're not going to stress on that. Nay. We are just going to pop this guy back in. Mm. Err. Don't you wish that the entire GPU industry and every AIB partner would remember that low profile GPUs are something people want? Wouldn't that be neat if they remembered that? Like, man, there's so many peripherals I wish came in low profile. Add in cards, just in general. They just don't. Yes, sir, Justin. It is a underclocked 5600G running at a whopping 2.9 gigahertz. That'll probably get taken down to 2.5 gigahertz if I can help it. Come on, catch. Catch. Yeah, there's just not... <laughs> Low-profile GPUs are kind of been... You know, all of the AIB partners, and uh, we're too busy making those mining cards, bruh. You got time for that. Oh, what do we think about that 4070 Ti? Jeez, NVIDIA really... NVIDIA their... NVIDIA with that one, didn't they? 
that's a classic. So do you want a card that's as fast as a uh, 3080, but is a hundred dollars more? Nvidia's got just the card for you. Uh, they used to call it the 3080. They should have called it like the you know 3080 SC, like 3080 short bus edition. Um, no, the third. What, what was it? A 3080 or 30? Yeah, it was a 3080. It's a 3080 12 gig, and it wasn't a 3080 at all. It was like, and. Um, so that got released this week as the, not 30, I keep saying 30, you, I mean 40, sorry. Released as the 4070. It's weird, man, because like it's like the 30 generation didn't exist. Um, and it kind of didn't in, you know, consumer. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so th they got a card that absolutely nobody is going to buy. And... All of their partners are peeved at them right now because, you know, this was the card that they unlaunched. They had to, you know, it was like, ah, well, you know, listen, we had to find where the consumer stupid line or just how much BS consumers would put up with. Thank you. We were able to find the line with this card and we're going to dial it back. Unfortunately, the, uh, you know, MSIs and all the ad in board partners, they'd already made all the cards, man. Like they had the boxes printed, so they that if you wondered how long it takes to like rebadge all those, you know, cards, that's how long it took. A couple of months. Yeah. Yeah, they they found they found where the line is. Of what people you know, yeah, you know what? You know what? In video NVIDIA learned a lesson. They learned that, you know, during the past three years, during um, the plague, that there was a section of people, be it FOMO or just like hardcore necessity, would pay $1,000 for a video card. Outside of their core market, their primary market for the last three years were the miners buying uh, GPUs by the pallet at whatever price, as long as they could get them, because it was profitable. And, you know, it's a different price dynamic when you're thinking about mining, because then the GPU is not for, like what you can use it for. Then then the GPU becomes a long-term investment, you know? So there was some sense in being able to buy a $1,000 GPU that, say, over the next three years could make you fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600. So you could recoup... And even turn a profit on it. So, you know, you, you could, you know, with a little bit of mental gymnastics and a little bit of Ethereum mining and pretending that you don't have to pay for power, maybe you could justify a $1,000 GPU. But no, no. Like, that that wasn't something that was maintainable. And NVIDIA's like, no, no, that's, that's the new normal. And AMD's like, no, NVIDIA, you're ripping off everyone. We're AMD. How dare you charge $1,000 here? Here's our savior GPU at $999. Get wrecked, AMD. You're no better than Intel. Um, see, now that we put the right bracket on it, it still doesn't close, but it closes almost doesn't close a little bit better. Look at that. Satisfy. Oh yeah, I got to put the little thing in there. So, uh, no. I mean, here's the thing. AMD and Nvidia are doing exactly what they're supposed to do really um, is try to find the price, you know, sell it what the market will bear. So this has been a learning experience. That's going to stay closed enough. That's going to be in a drawer sitting like that. That's not going to bug me. Um, so <laughs> here we are. We've found that. And you'll notice all the 40 series Pretty much in stock everywhere. And uh, let's get this critter back up. So, and it's not like we're heading into a recession or anything. I just want to see if they can get everything readjusted. That's kind of where I'm at. I want to see how they recalibrate to something more reasonable because at this rate 
they're going to try to make a what do you consider the low end you know is it fair to call like the 60 series like the 2060 3060 and i assume we're going to get a 4060 is that like the low end i don't i've never considered that low end i considered it the low end of um mid-range like the low end was always like the 50 series and lower and lower and lower but then again there was a time like seven years ago where nvidia had you know a hundred dollar gpu that you could game on you know how much was the 1030 back in the day and you know game but you get what i'm saying right oh uh, where did it there it is Yeah, I have a Founders Edition 2060 sitting in a box. It's like the backup for my 3060. My just in case card. That's just the only time I've ever bought a Founders Edition card. But it was like that weird time before everything went sideways. I just they announced it. I got up that morning, I went to the website and I bought it. It's strange times those. Ha ha, I've trapped you. There we go. Now we have 10 gigs of goodness. Where do we want to put you? Pick a header, any header. Uh, system, system. I don't know. Do I, do I have any favorites? What do we got for fan options down here? Uh, audio. Sysfan 3. You know what? Let's go for SysFan 3. I like that. It's got a good, nice ring to it. Sounds like an honest header, doesn't it? SysFan 3? It's a, it's a header you can trust. I love that they have like notches on them these days. Yes, get off my lawn. I'm an old man. This, this that was a carp shoot back in the day. Um, you know, but I mean, so was plugging in hard drives, you know, ID hard drives before we got a little notch on them. Like, well, that didn't boot on the ribbon cables. Um, you know, it's not like they're going to help color coding the fans and giving me a positive negative. That would make it too easy. But yeah, we got that little notch and that's awesome. So, yes, children, that is why old people say things like what's well, so easy to build PCs this because it is. Comparatively, though, comparatively, you know, if it's not your jam, I got respect for anybody who's going to crack a case open, buy a bunch of parts and stick it together and try to make a working system out of it because it's lost to me, man. Like, I can't possibly like look at this as anything other than like, yeah, that, that's just a PC, you know, after 30 years, I don't think anything of it. It's just a utility device. Uh, let's attempt cable management, kind of ish. Uh, maybe. I really think that's about as well. Yeah, that's about the best we're going to do. And by that, I mean, that's about the best I'm going to do, kids. Yes, this man, you I don't know if you're joking or not. That was my first thought when I opened this thing up. I'm like, you know what? I could just snip those off. And I was like, no, no, no. You could desolder them. It's like the whole front panel module. I don't want to mess with it. That's where, that's exactly where we're at. Is there really, okay. Here's something I don't typically build. In fact, I've never built a small form factor thermal nope box because I'm not a serial killer. Um, do people really attempt to do cable management? Like that's going to make a damn bit of difference in one of these things. Like, is that a lie you like to tell yourself? Like, oh yeah, we can optimize airflow. I'm like, that, not really. I mean, um, <laughs> not to kick down the door and you know break out the physics, but that's it. Uh, Mm. Yeah, there's 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 no such thing. Like the just the seven liter, like the idea of airflow in this is uh you need to blow some smoke through it and watch and like 
you don't really have airflow in a traditional sense in something that's small. Um, but that's okay. I, I don't make a very good YouTuber. That's like science and shit. People don't want to hear that. I mean, look, Van Gogh Burr, Blink Blink. Uh, I gotta... I'm gonna pull this off, though. Speaking of that, because I, that will free up through the holes and stuff. <laughs> science terms. Pay attention. Holes and stuff. I'd like to just take this out. See, okay, I found the third thing I want to 3D print. The third thing I would like to 3D print, says the person who's yet to buy a new 3D printer who has the original MakerBot, <laughs> is a front intake. Dell style. You get what I'm saying? Like, just that shroud that points down? So it would have that cold air intake? Then we could do like a stage 2 RGB kit on it? Put a Type R sticker, maybe, you know, lower the suspension. That'd be pretty dope. That'd probably be really good for cooling, too. Um, Doing the camera watch and some weather. Steve, I know you're doing work for home, but you're supposed to be working, my man. Come on. Uh, yeah, let's see. Like OCD and cable management, you probably want to keep your OCD away from cable management because that's the easiest way to break a connector. As a lot of people learned with well, the 4090s, right? We, we, we need to torque on that and start a fire because that'll happen when you start torquing on uh, cables made by the lowest bidder. So we are going to take that apart. But at the end of the day, if it makes you happy, go for it, man. I'm also the type of person that doesn't have a PC on my desk because that seems like a horrible idea. I, I don't, as long as it's not like blocking any actual airflow. If you've seen my, you know, the Threadripper and Jackbox the systems that I build, those things are just empty and big cavernous boxes. Not much in the way of cables anyway. Um, just make sure none of the fans are blocked or anything like that. I don't need to look inside of them. I want them under the desk, far away from my head, because I don't want to hear them. That's a deceptive little screw. You, It's wider than this. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's a strange thread, too. You know what? People have, you know, it doesn't matter if it's like a Dell or an HP, any commodity. You know, you know, I have a couple of the Dell 3010s and I got an HP, whatever that series is, business PCs in the studio. I'd never want to try to modify one, but when it comes to replacing things, man, that you just, you you completely understand why they have the jacked up custom motherboards and everything else. The second you go, oh man, I got to replace power supply, click, pull out, click, put back in, done, walk off. You're like, yeah, I get it. So we want this to come completely out. That might not be an idea. That's going to happen though. I just realized that. Wait, hopefully that's just clipped in. Yeah, that looks like it's just clipped in, guys. Maybe. Maybe. We'll find out. We will find out. Um, okay, those two standoffs are there. This, this is what I'm worried about. Oh, never mind. I can feed myself, kids. I know, shocking. That's plastic, okay. Behold, smartest man in the world. Mm. Well, here's the trick. Buy a side panel without a window on it. I was doing cable management last night. Um, 
you know, some of those uh, braided snakes that you shove. I'm just rewiring a umbilical cord of HDMI cables from the Threadripper um, back here to four other PCs, and that was an adventure. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, though. All right, bonus screws. Let's keep those over here, and let's put this back and button it up. form factor eh. I just uh, I've all even even as a youth even back like back in the 90s uh, I was we did okay we didn't have an option okay I'm not even gonna try man like when I first started building um PCs everything was pretty much a full tower once we got you know, then we had like the mid tower thing, and I didn't even like mid towers. I had a couple of mid towers that I put together, but from I would say like teenage years on, I always went for like the full tower. Why? Because it looked cooler. You know, bigger and faster, right? It looked like it was a real box of business that it didn't have a AMD K5 in it. You know, and a 256 megs of RAM. No, no, it, was a, it looked like it was a big honky chonky like A4000 server. So what else do we need to do? Um, put this back on. And I've just kind of rolled with that, especially when it's building stuff in here. I just want like as much airflow. All of the cases I have in here are like the Corsair, like 7000, 7 whatever D in the big giant Corsair cube. Like, they're Swiss cheese, so they have 140 millimeter fans in them. Noctua fans, not that Noctua fans are better than anything else. It's just that uh, what you pay to have a fan that's been through an actual QA process, so I don't have to worry about them, like, dying on me. Um, yeah, and run them at real low RPM so they don't make any noise, because we have microphones in the studio, and I need to be able to record. Oop. Yeah, that's the aesthetic. I, I agree with you, Don. And it, and it's also the functionality at this point. Um, there's a Meshify. Oh, like, maybe. Flying Spaghetti Monster Willing will be doing a epic build to upgrade Threadbooper. And then Threadbooper is going to become this really cool PC that we'll be able to do, like, Sunday streams on. For, like, editing. I'll be doing that. You know, like the audio and editing Da Vinci. Like, hey, come hang out and do something on Sunday with me. But I need something that I can also, like, ingest and broadcast 4K. Uh, but there's a Meshify case that... <clears throat> it's on our wish list. We want to look at it. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. But take a look at it. Jordan said it was a good case, too. So it's a bit much. It's like $200. But it, it the thing is, is getting one that's going to fit in EATX motherboard. And... The problem with EATX, with case manufacturers, ATX means whatever they kind of feel like EATX means. It's ish. And um, the Epic motherboard is definitely EATX. And it w won't even fit without modification into the case that my um, Threadripper motherboard is in, which is EATX. It's uh, the... Um, Epic motherboard from Super Micro is like full size. So like getting the power connectors on yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna be fun. Okay, so we have slightly better airflow, less restricted. I yeah, I want to do something. Can I knock that out? Does that come? Uh I don't know. Who needs meshify? We have plastify. Like that. We have that in... Oh, this thing's got room for a second in... Okay, I was today years old. Look at that. I just... I huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Why? For what? What reason? Backup drive. Probably. Maybe. Mayhaps. 
Second M. My, aren't we fancy. And as always, um, I do want to thank Arthur and N. DS and Joe. DS and Joe got us some memory room. Arthur is responsible for this nightmare um, thermal nope box, which I'm also grateful for. Which Linus from Linus Tech Tips. Did anybody go back and watch? I wasn't even joking. The dude released a video with the exact same case the day before I did our live stream. Like, you gotta be kidding me. What are the odds of this? Because they wanted to build a uh, portable rendering box. And, you know, me and somebody on the Linux Tech Tips uh, research staff have pretty good like when it comes to price and performance, yeah, this is old school. This is steel. This is not aluminium, but it's like 90 bucks and it comes with a 200 watt power supply. You can't, like, it's not going to win, you know, any, um, beauty contest, but it's purpose built. It's purpose built. It is purpose built, so I think we're good here, everyone. Uh, we can light this thing up, see if it boots. That'd be neat, would it? I do want to put the case on because that was kind of the whole. Oh, we got to set the fan. We got to do that. We got to see. Oh man! All right, so that's going to be a thing. We got to see how loud we can make this guy. Um, this one. I'm also stubborn. Uh, this way. Click. It's got a little safety mechanism in the back. Look at that. Now, how much would you pay? You know what? All in. What do we end up paying for this? Let's say 95 for the case, uh, 120 for the 5600G, 50 bucks for the RAM, and let's just round it up, say, 100 bucks for the motherboard, because I think it got motherboard for like 90. So, like under 300 bucks, I think. I don't know. Every time I try to do maths, my brain just pieces right out. All right. And we got a Kingston drive. So we're going to put that in the stack of those. What are the next steps? Let me tell you what the next steps are. I need to plug an HDMI cable in this guy. Which I have, strangely enough, prepared. Rare, I understand. Um... Show prep. I gotta be very careful because I have uh, the lighting. The lights that do the lighting are very lightweight because they were really cheap, but they work. Uh, HDMI. And I think I'll be able to give everybody a video signal out of this instead of pointing the camera at the BIOS. No, you know what? I got to use this for actual work. I can't put a toy Linux distribution on it. I got to put a big boy distro. I'd, lo I'd love to run Arch. I really would. I'm not even joking around when I say that. I wish I was like, had time and resources to have an F around box, you know, something to play with. Those days are gone, man. It sucks. It sucks. Um, and it's pretty actual work. The only thing these boxes are used for is uh, actual shows, actual educational videos, all those fun things, and actual streams and stuff like this. Yeah, it's not real work, is it? What defines real work, though? But most importantly, I also need um, a Linux distribution that has drivers for... Um, the thousand dollar black magic stuff I have sitting in this box. There's that. And well, I don't know. Black magic does uh Arch have has anyone put that in the AUR yet? Has have has somebody built a black magic? This is gonna be Debian, by the way. I'm curious. Deck link is what you'd be looking for. Mm. 
Mm. I ask only because Black Magic is, is the type of company that will come after somebody if you're redistributing their stuff. They got that old school spite. They got that cease and desist energy. So we don't know. Um, I mean, they should have. You know, this is like, you know, you wonder why nobody redistributes uh, DaVinci Resolve. I'm like, yeah, you do it once, bro. All right. Um, I need to go grab a 10 gig copper cable for the fiber card and uh, keyboard and mouse. Latest 2023. Good on them. Good on them. Now we just have to get uh, Blackmagic to officially support Arch. So when I call them with tech support, they don't tell me to pound sand. Because <laughs> they will tell you to pound sand. Guess what? I learned that the hard way. I called them up. I'm like, hey, I have a problem with DaVinci Resolve. And they're like, oh, so you're running CentOS 7.3? I'm like, no, I'm running Debian 10. I'm like, get lost, loser. Click. I can respect that. Um, fortunately, Debian 10 is supported uh, for the Decklink series of graphic. No, I have a quad. What are we using right now? Decklink quad, 4K quad, and uh, an Intensity Pro for the things these are hooked up to. What do we got? Yay, Decklink. Decklink SDK. Pretty nice. VLC Decklink. Yeah, I've seen some people like they, there's a V4L2 loopback um, module for a deck link with FFMP. I'm like, man, just just go buy a little cheap capture card, man. All right. Uh, we've been over this. Um, you got Debian, right? You got Debian. Debian Debian's like the queen bee. It's the origin. It's the first vampire. And, uh, or think of Debian as like a Honda Civic, right? Um, and then you got people who like to take their Honda Civic and modify it. You know, they put big spoilers on it. They lower it and you know, type R stickers and RGBs or whatever. They put body kits on their, um, Honda Civics. So Pop OS, like, you know, Ubuntu, it's, it's Debian, it's just got body kits on it. You know, at, at the core, it all starts as Debian. So I'm like, hey, man, why don't I just run Debian? Like instead of all this lacquery do dot stuff, right? Plus, Debian's easy to use too. If you know how to, if you know how to use Pump, if you know how to use um, Ubuntu, Mint, Cinnamon, whatever, um, Lollipop, Chainsaw, Linux, I don't know. If that exists, it probably is based on Debian. You know, it's going to be based on what Debian, and then it's going to be based on Arch, and then you got psychopaths that have distros based on Fedora. Like, just run Fedora, man, right? So yeah, it's how I feel about Pop. Um, it's Debian. I don't, I don't have any harsh. I don't really have any feelings for it. It's all. It's Linux distributions or Linux distributions. At the end of the day, you will get to a point where it doesn't matter what distribution you run because because once you're done, uh, it, and I've said this and I'm dead serious about it. You can give me a copy of Hannah Montana Linux. Uh, you give me an afternoon with it, and it's going to be running whatever I need to run. I'm going to strip out what I need. I'm going to build whatever kernel I need to put in it and we'll get everything updated. It might be a genuine pain to do that. And I'd rather not do that. But yeah, like it's just a kernel, man. Like distributions don't mean it is. And that's why, you know, Debian works for me. I don't have to rip anything out, you know? But um, yeah, Pop! OS, I recommend Pop! OS for like getting started. It's like... Uh, it's in Pop OS is a weird one because it's based off Ubuntu. So, oh, I wish them all the best. Cool. Uh, let me go get some networking gear and we'll do a live Linux installation. And I, I'm sorry, you know, it's not going to be Arch tonight. Sorry. So we'll have about, you know, two or three minutes. Chill out. Yeah, I only knocked down like. 11 things trying to get that set up. Carnage. Knocked out a diffusion filter. Didn't hurt it. Ah, that's right. Ow. Ah. 
That still hurts, but it's less bright. Okay, now... I felt kind of a little trick to get it to play right with our, um... Speaking attack link with the capture card. One of the downsides of the deck link uh, 4K quad is traditionally you get a bunch of settings and like the deck link settings in the software for your desktop software. It doesn't, it just YOLOs everything. So then you have to fight with it after the fact. Uh, what is this? This is a 10 gig network. Ether noodle, not really. Twin X. There's two wires in these instead of like, how many pairs do we have in um, Ethernet? Six, eight? Man, if I had to answer that to save my life, I think it's eight, isn't it? I would err on the side of eight. So these work in place of uh, fiber optic cables uh, for short runs. Yeah, this one's a nice and thin one because it's uh, like maybe 1.5 meters and you really don't want to go over um, seven. I wouldn't like I would I try to basically you'd use this use these kind of connect in a rack four pairs four pairs four pairs of what four pairs of 11 I'm assuming two but for the sake of content and if we're lucky I won't have to restart the uh switch that would be super cool um i'm going to try to put this in sfp6 if i try i need i have okay Four pairs of bananas. See that? That's what I'm talking about. That sounds more reasonable. Yeah, there's no good place to put that one, is there? Where did I have it before? Over here? Yeah, it did. Hey, I like that better. And there we go. We do need the keyboard and mouse. At least we need to keep... Yeah, let's do the mouse, too. We get our boots. Das boots. I don't remember if, if we plug the USB thing. I think I plugged that in. A banana for scale. And of course we need power. Hmm. Probably have to change the boot order. Probably, probably not. Um, one second, I need to go walk over to the closet and grab our um, keyboard and mouse. I don't know about you, but I keep a couple of these around the house. Keyboard and mouse just wound up. Then again, I have a couple of headless systems in the house. It could be from that. I guess if, you, if everything you have as a monitor, you probably have a keyboard and mouse plugged into everything. I got a lot of systems that don't have a keyboard and mouse plugged into them. Like, how do you get into them? SSH. in the case. You know, it's like being in a data center and you're like, yo, where's the crash cart? I gotta go pull and they, they hand you one of these. They hand you a keyboard and it's like, here. Oh no. True story. Okay, these are gonna go in... 
We have to fight USB superposition. Doesn't matter even if you look at it. So you might as well not look at it and just go ahead and give it its spinny reward. A Raspberry Pi hooked to TV instead of a monitor? Nah. I don't have anything. Uh, no, my Raspberry Pi is hooked up to first guy. So this is technically my monitor for my Raspberry Pi because it runs my stream deck. So I can put fancy buttons on it, which I don't. I just use text because that's how I roll. Okay, so I need first thing. First thing I just did. I need to use thread rip roof. Nope. Uh -uh. I'm trying to use the desktop PC with this just instinct. I'm like, yeah, let, wait, that's not going to work, is it? No. Why? Because we need this mouse. I need to create a Blackmagic device. Uh, quad number two. Yeah. Is in theory this should work. We're, we're gonna find out. It's on channel three throughout the house. What do you uh, did you just do it for funsies? Is there a practical use to it? Like, not hey man, I, you know me, I don't care if there's a practical use to do something. I'm I'm a big fan of neat or because I can, as a testament to the arrogance of mankind. I'm like, valid excuse, bro. Cut this bad boy on. Putting it off a little bit. You know what? We'll call it even. I will be ecstatic if... The Microtech switch plays nice and picks up. Right Microtech switch? Which normally, in any other situation, never have a problem with. This happened, like, I think three times since I bought that switch. Um... Which is normally not a big deal, but if that works and if the capture works, we'll be sitting pretty. Boop. Oh, it's spun up. Uh oh. Uh oh. Boom. All right. No, how much would you pay? Look at that, kids. Look at that. Yay, we did it, Reddit. We did it. Um, now we got to see if we can get it in the BIOS. It's wheezing. It's wheezing. We got to get into the BIOS because what we're going to do is we're, we're, we're going to set this thing to as fast as we can get it without being audible. Installable speech, man. You know what? Uh... I, I wish it had a rap battle installer where I had to engage in an epic rap battle in order to uh, get through the install. What do we need to do? Control it, delete, and we're going to see if we can get into the BIOS. Delete key. Safe bet, right? Hey. Look at that. If that, man, if that network um, comes up, well, everything's going to be coming up in Millhouse. Oh, Katana, you sweet summer child. Let me tell you about my buddy F10. I'm looking at you, Dell. Yeah, you did. Yeah, this one's delete. Delete's a safe bet. Yeah, F12, it would be my fallback. I um, only know about F10 because I finally went and found a manual. I'm like, how the hell do I get in the BIOS in this thing? I'm like, oh, odd. Yeah, 
Yes, Beastwick. Um, this is this is my Steam Deck under here. It's the Steam Deck XL. It just came out this morning, and um, we're going to. I need to make this bigger so I can see you guys. Don't give me a second. Um, okay. Uh, USB, USB. Okay, how about I use the right mouse? <laughs> hey, it's these are 128 gig. Neat, you have UFI hard disk. Flash drive, it sees that. Flash drive, and... All right. So you do see we're running at uh, 2.9 gigajoules. Oh man, it's super portable, it's super portable. Uh, it's, uh, I've got a, like, it's, it's got a fold-out 75-inch screen. It's going to be dope. Fan info. Okay, system fan, right? Ooh, what system fan did... Hmm. Okay. 1,500 RPMs? Let's see, can we hear that? Hang on. Yes, we can hear that. Uh, let's see what we get down to. Four. Three. Four. Let me see if I can hear that. kind of weird to do man let's, let's let's really take it down i know boo msi you know fun yeah it needs to be faster than that if you can't tell i just licked my fingers to go hey do we have fair air and um Oh, it looks like we're going to at least... Coming up a little bit. You know what? That's not too bad. I can feel it. Can you feel it? That's not too bad. All right, we'll leave it there. We can always go back and salt the taste. Uh, was there anything else that I told myself that I'm going to do when I'm in the BIOS? I don't remember. I need to think about this before I do anything, before I close it. Any other, other settings we should check? I don't think there's anything we need to do for the um, M.2. Is there? Yeah, I th think I'm gonna let it roll at 2.9 right now. I mean, one thing that we can obviously do is, this is my fan curve. If you didn't know, the 5600G does not begin to thirtle, thermal throttle until it hits 90C, which just adds to, this is such a cool little CPU for a hundred bucks, isn't it? This fan is set to smart. The other one is just set on voltage. Because the only speed it needs to run at being an exhaust fan like it is at the front of the case is as fast as I can get it without it being audible. And I might buy that little um, Corsair makes a slim fan. Um, slim. Top cam, side cam needs to come up. One, there we go. So it is blowing and doing its job and exhausting the heat from the top. You know, this is the bottom of the case. I even put little feet on it. Came with little feet. See? Little feet. 
which I found in the box after I initially set it down on the hardwood floor and I went to uh, plug something in and it just slid all the way. I'm like, well... So that's looking good. You know, we're at idle. 33 degrees. Uh, 1200 RPMs. On the... Um, So yeah, I, I don't think there's anything. I don't really want to do any like un undervolting or anything. 2.9 core voltage, CPU voltage, VDDP, and DRAMs at 1.3. Yeah, I think that's fine. Oh yeah, I know it can do a custom curve, but uh, I want it at a static rate, fixed rate. This is a utility PC. This is a butter robot, and it's an appliance for the studio. And this isn't a... I want it blowing as much air out 24-7 anytime this thing's on. So yeah, I think we're good. Is this fan control 725.52? Click. Come on, reboot. Little buddy, I know you can do it. Hey. Now if the fiber card picks up, we'll be um we'll be ecstatic. Ecstatic. Yeah. Ecstatic's the right word. I I will be really pleased if the uh fiber card picks up this time without having to fight it. Is that gonna be too big? Um, I guess what would make more sense? Uh, you'd want to see all of the installer, right? Or do we, do we just want to uh, shrink the installer a little bit? So it's not covered up? That should be fine, shouldn't it? i to get an idea of what's going on. Esperanto 9. Uh, how you doing, Dutch, uh, German? What could we do? I wouldn't trust myself to do it under Japanese. I would take a stab at it. Oh, we could do it in uh, El Portuguese. Or real Portuguese. It's got, you know, authentic Portuguese and regular Portuguese. Uh, Welsh. <laughs> Hard mode. Oh, I, I respect a language made entirely out of vowels. Um, Polish. I want to say I could fumble my way. I could decipher enough enough Polish to get through it. And let's be honest, I've done the Debian installs. It wouldn't even be fair. I would be able to get through it no matter what. American English? No, Burmese English. Canadian French English. Ooh. Wendigs. That'd be that'd be a cool font. Catch you off guard. Hoping the network thing gets detected. That just make life so much easier. Is it lit up? I can't tell. I'm not seeing a link. That worries me. I don't want to pull in the stack card too hard. Ugh. Oh 
man. That means I'm going to have to power cycle this thing again, which sucks. That's going to be the first thing we're going to do this time instead of like trying to pull everything apart. Um, yeah, I could do TTY. I could do a tax to install. That's not a problem either. But we got to get the uh, network card up and running, which means I'm going to have to do the thing where I restart the fiber switch again, because whatever, this triggers something that doesn't want it to pick up. So, yeah, there's your fair warning, everyone. Let me make this as painless as possible, though. Um, do I have a keyboard laying around? Yes. Oh. I'm going to hit that and I'm going to do AJ snapshot, RJ, LGC, W, and have that ready to go. All right. Um, so I'm going to burp the stream, everyone. It'll pop off, pop back on. Sometimes I'm quick enough to get it back to where it'll just blink out for a second. Uh, yeah. Outside of that, just uh, hang tight. You might have to give the stream a refresh, but it should be like 10 seconds at most. Be right back. Joe, I use the fiber switch that is in my budget, which is, what is it? The cloud router switch. CRS 309 1S 1G8S IN from Microtik. So it's a dual boot. It can run router OS or it can run switch OS. And it has eight um, 10 gig fiber holes on the front, plus uh, RS 232 port and, you know, another diagno you know, standard Ethernet port diagnostics. You can get it for like under 300 bucks. They're pretty dope. They get the job done. This is genuinely like the only time I've ever had it experience that issue. But I mean, it's typically a switch. You don't plug a lot of, you know, it's a fiber switch. You're not plugging stuff in and out all the time. But it doesn't like this direct attach cable being plugged into it without power cycling it. So let's configure this network. Now that the network is uh, configurable. IP address 192. Dot 168 .88 .40. It's the IP address of the Jordan box, as is tradition. Let's do IPv6. <laughs> oh. Man, okay, do any of you nutters actually use IPv6 on like your home network for some reason? Like, can you follow? Uh, if your reason's like, yeah, it gets, it's cool. That's fine, but does anybody have like a practical reason to use that uh, subnet mask? That's fine. Uh, gateway, that's right. And name server. Cloudflare. Cloudflare. It's always, yeah, Cloudflare or Google. Host name. Uh, rectangle. No domain name. Uh, password, oh, we're just going to use that standard password that's for these three boxes, so feel free to go try to, if you're ever in the house and you need to break it, break in, uh, honestly, it'd be easier just to call me up and ask me because I'd tell you what it is. I don't even have these things set to use a password to log in. Uh... It is enabled IPv4. If, dude, like, even with a like, Jordan, more password. We are in Eastern. Yeah, IPv6, I don't know enough about networking. I'm horrible at networking. Um, as, which, you know. How do you get better at learning about uh, networking? You buy Microtech products. Because if you don't learn at least a bit more than you already know, you're not going to make them work at all. But one of the cool things about Microtech is you can buy um, like ludicrously overpowered hardware for reasonable, very, very reasonable 
prices. Like Microtech makes some Cisco killers, man. Like that are hard. I've read stories about people trying to get them past uh, purchasing officers in the company. They refuse to believe that they were a replacement because they're like 10% of the cost. And you don't have to deal with Cisco nonsense. And Cisco's nonsense, full stack nonsense company, if you've ever had to deal with Cisco. Uh, yeah. Man, uh, you know, honor thy drummer, honor thy basis, honor thy network engineer. Okay, we're just going to use the entire disk. Hey, NVMe. Yep, we're going to be lazy. Why? Because we're just going to clone this bad boy, and if anything happens to it, we're going to plop in another one. Um, Swap, one gig of swap, that's fine. Free space, yeah, sure. Go, baby, go. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Like, you pay for it. Like, decent quality hardware that is, like, super user-friendly, like Unify. Unify? Bit overpriced for what they are, but, you know. <sighs> Installing Linux is so hard, you guys. It takes forever. So much work. These weird moon glyphs. Hey, man, I got respect for anybody that looks at a perfectly functioning, a perfectly function, a, a computer with an operating system, which is usually going to be Windows, and be like, you know what? Let's put another operating system on there because you're you're going in the right direction. Ah, uh, package manager. Yes. Yeah, we're just going to stick with this. Uh, no proxy. Unify, Unfi, yeah. Um, I'm not, I don't have anything. <laughs> I don't know enough about networking to have a, I, I can't, I, I can't be a fanboy of like one or the other, you know? You know, it's just like, no, never get Netgear. Netgear is evil, except Cisco's bad. I've dealt with Cisco on the enterprise level, and, but, I'm not saying anything new, even if you don't know anything about networking, you know, Cisco equal bad. And, um, but outside of that, it's blowing nice warm air. I'm sure that's not helping things, blocking it off. I worked with a CC and E as my super. <laughs> All right. We're going to select and install software. Now we're going to do the fun things. Kernel 510, cutting edge technology. Not really. Not necessarily. I will... Hmm, it's 2 o'clock. Yeah, I got time. Uh, we might do... Because I... You know, this is integrated, so I'll run um, the back ports kernel. So we'll get uh, kernel 6.0. I don't think it's a 6-1 yet. Okay, popularity contest. Do you want to send data bits to Debian? See, Debian does it right, right out of the box, just like that. They're like, hey, we're just going to assume you don't want to. So it's an opt-in. I know that's a weird concept, isn't it? Every other company. I don't know Debian's not a company, but you get my point. What do we need? We... Do not want GNOME, but we do want the S XFCE, and we do want an SSH server. Look at that. What other options? GNOME Flashback. I wonder what that is. Is that like GNOME, but it's usable? Uh, KDE Plasma, Cinnamon. Good night, mate. LXDE, LXQT. Ugh. It's useless. Without enlightenment, this is all rubbish distribution. You know what? This is good. That's fine. That's everything I need. Oh, it's GNOME 3 that looks like GNOME 2. So, all right, they try to pretend it's usable. If Jordan's still listening, Jordan's playing around with GNOME. He hasn't, I don't think he's given up the GNOME yet. He's been trying it for the past couple of weeks. A 
former uh, user of the glorious XFCE desktop. Literally unusable. Oh man, that's a shame. You, listen, there's there's an extension that'll fix that though. The uh, don't don't die extension. We we didn't even use my tweezers. I brought them just in case. Damn shame. Yeah, that's a straight up hand warmer, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, I don't have too much collateral damage from this. I did save the box. I don't. I, ah, no use for that though. I'll do something with it. But it's good to know the NVMe drive was not uh, completely dead on arrival. That was always interesting. What do you assume? Um, I, I, I have to take it that everyone reads Amazon reviews, because even if you're not ordering from Amazon, when you search for a product and you type in review, you usually end up on Amazon, don't you? And uh, what, what's everyone's current strategy for finding the valid reviews? Mine's a mixture of like sort by three or four stars and sort by date. So we get the newest first. Because I always assume all the five stars that have been upvoted for popularity reasons are just bogus reviews at this point. Yeah, I don't go as low as the two. I don't go... Because I assume, you know, for this NVMe drive, right? We got this, you know, El Cheapo NVMe drive. I assume the person who gives this, the two-star review, shoved it in the PCI Express slot and cut the system on. And said it was DOA. Maybe I'm being unfair when I say that. But I think like three and four is like three is like, yeah, it didn't work. Or maybe I kind of four, I think, is that sweet spot of the. You can assume the person is like technically or not even technically, whatever, you know, insert item here is familiar with item. Competent ish. And. Um, cares enough to write about it the one star i don't know man like <laughs> i just ignore one star reviews i just perceive those as like screeching into void and it like devolves you know like paragraphs like multi-paragraphs like your walls of text It's weird. See, it's like some people have not picked that up. No one wants to read or let me more importantly, you got a lot to say, but you're ensuring that no one will ever read it as write a wall of text, like in a forum or even in like, you know, like on matrix or Slack or discord or any place like that. No one's going to read your wall of text. Man. Now, if there's multiple, yes, I'm not saying ignore the one star reviews. I just don't, a weight them is heavy. If you're trying to track down issues, I can see all yeah, all of this is valid. I think we all agree no one trusts the five star reviews though. Those are just like you go back and read the five star reviews after you've ordered the product. <laughs> That's the only time you read the five star reviews. Like once it's on, once you've ordered the product, then you went to YouTube and watched some videos of people doing thing with product. Then you go back to Amazon, then you check out all the five star reviews to ensure that your money was wisely spent. Oh yeah. Oh, sometimes you got to give it a refresh, Joe. Um, you didn't miss anything. We were talking about Amazon reviews and how we sort through Amazon reviews. And we talked about uh, who makes the best networking hardware. We didn't come to a general consensus on that. Yeah, I just assume all the five-star reviews. I mean, Amazon is... You used to... There was a time when you ordered something from Amazon, but now it's just... Uh, it's just it's you, you, ha you have to be on your toes when you buy stuff, right? Like, there's dodgy stuff on Amazon these days, like a lot of it. 
Okay. Let's go. Um, let's ploop this guy out of the back. <clears throat> so Debian stick. Boop. Yes, the fiber card came back up after uh, rebooting the fiber switch. Yeah, but like I said, Unify is awesome for people who don't know a lot about networking. <laughs> I will say Unify is like really user friendly though. Hey, we got a GUI. Let me in. Let me in. Oh, it's been doing good. Oh, um, it's been handling truck mania since uh, last Friday, Tuesday, and uh, it'll be back this making another appearance this Friday. Uh, it's the champ at 1080p60. Hmm, it's such a tidy go, you guys. Oh man, uh, so step one. ATC, uh, man, it's weird typing one of these. Horses list. Oh, right. I got to do this dumb thing. Hang on. Um, what is it? User mod, um, it's user mod, right? User mod a g uh, pseudo Jordan. Let's find out. <laughs> that seemed right in my head. Um, because Debbie and I'll scream at you if you're not in the uh, pseudo group. Uh, Oh, do I need to log out of this? I do need to log out of the session, don't I? You know what? We don't need to do that. Just, ah, by the way, this mouse has a dodgy uh, left click on it, if you're wondering. If I open things twice, it's not because I really love them. Nano etc apt sources that list. Okay. Boop. Being reported, man. I know, man. None free. Updates. I don't know if you need to do that on security or not. I always do. Uh, let's make sure I spelled contrib right. Contrib, contrib, dun dun dun, control X. Yes. Okay. Ah, uh, this is Jordan's box. That's how it's uh, always like. This is Jordan's, like when you see Jordan on the Life Team Cast Weekly and you see Jill on it. I should say this is the box for people whose names start with J. So, when you see that going on, um, yeah, it runs the Jitsi instance, and also it's a Turkmania box, too. Oh, yeah. So how do we install the uh, extra video bits for this? We gotta do a couple things. Uh, first thing I need to do is at firmware uh, non-free. After install firmware Linux not free. Why? Because we want to use the computer, that's why. Uh Jack D2. What else do we need, kids? Um 
Steam. Uh, is there anything else we need? Maybe. Baby box ribs. Fair. I don't know. Uh, eh, yes. Good call. Hop top. This is the... Do you hear me, Debian developers? All of you volunteers. This is, this is my sticking issue with the entirety of the Debian project. Why do you not have HTOP by default? Yes, it does. I just got to find it. You know what? We'll find it in a minute. I thought it was just Steam. Well, um, AMD microcode, doop, 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 libfado. Yeah, yep, yep. That's all good. That's a utility box. This isn't a setup. There's, there's nothing from restore. This just gets set up and it it's going to run Steam now. But tradition, traditionally, the only thing this box ran was a web browser. So enable real time priority. Right. Why should HTOP be included by default? Because I want it. Need I say more? Nay. Just for that, we're going to run HTOP. Look at it. It's being all HTOPy. <laughs> um, okay, what we, we also need to, uh, since this is Debian, Debian hates anything uh, that is not... Uh, that doesn't smell like patchouli. So we need to go to uh, CD space. Come on. Come on, P-R-O. Oh, psh, derp. And see, there's a blacklist in the MD64 microcode because you don't want your CPU to work. Um, and we're just going to get rid of that. Oh, there's nothing wrong with top. It's just inferior to HTOP. I mean, see, Jill just likes things just to be monochrome and bland. I'm not like Jill. I like color in my life. I like RGBs. What is that blacklist? That blocks the microcode from getting to your CPU to make sure it's lobotomized. So if you're running Debian, uh, Beastwick, uh, there's your TIL moment. Okay, so let's give this thing a... You know what? Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and just give this thing a reboot. Uh, oh, f, f off. You know what? I will be when I start back up, allegedly. Microcode is blocked. Uh, Non-free security reasons. I don't know where to do air quotes. Uh, which you know, we're 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 gonna put a real-time kernel in this thing, and we're gonna do uh, we're gonna disable all the uh, mitigation stuff anyway. So. Now that we have proper video support, I think I have to change um, this to from auto to 1080p 60. Hey, and it comes right up. Look at that. I've had a week to play with the box, so I've learned how to make it work with our capture hardware. Uh, not Vin. Jordan. Did I hit tab? Yeah. All right, we back, baby. Um, where do we want to go now? Where do we go now? Um, oh, that's as big as that's going to get. Uh, 
Let's do some hunting and packing then. Uh, is our pseudo thing working? Are we in the pseudo as well now? Yeah, we are. Yay! Um, come on! You know what I meant. Oh, right, right. I got to do the, um, oh, what do we got to do? We got to do the add architecture thing. Um, so that means, uh, what is it? You know what? Let's just look it up on this box. We get a web browser, right? Internet, Firefox, EXR. Um, Steam, Linux, Deb Wine. Oh yeah, Steam's uh, not 64-bit, man. Let, let's quietly, silently judge. Uh, yeah, that's all I need. 386. Copy. Pasta. Now we should just be able to install though, right? Allegedly. There we go. Hey, there we go. 372 megs, uh, additional packages. Yeah. And that's going to have the added benefit of getting all of our Mesa 3D stuff for the APU. So I'm good to go. Suit of all the things. It's like, just run his route, man. Debian will let you. Debian's like Red Hat. Debian's like Fedora. There's no safety checks on that. If you want to live that life, you can, baby. Pinko, Saxors, Vorbis. Oh, okay. That's a couple of things. We got to rip out. We got to rip out Pulse Audio and we got to rip out Pipewire. Yeah, NVIDIA installs the 32-bit um, compatibility stuff. Uh, Steam license. We agree. Sneaky valve, you gotta hit down, then okay. I tabbed through that a couple of times, just hitting edit, and I'm like, why did it install, man? I'm in installing whatever the 5600G has in it. The that one. Um, uh, sudo at purge. Pipe wire. Pulse audio. Meh. Yes. Go away, you evil, inferior sound systems. This is an Ulsa and Jack house. Uh, speaking of. Well, no, I gotta set that up. Uh, uh, up search Pulse Jack. Pulse audio module Jack. So I have to install. That's not going to work, is it? No, it's not. Pulse Audio Module Jack. Ta-da! See, I will take issue. Don't worry, we can fix that later. Uh, there we go. And now what do we need? Uh, I need a real-time kernel. So 510, 581. We're gonna do an app search. 
That should have worked, shouldn't it? 158. We narrow this down a little bit. Uh, 510 RT. Um, is dot 20 510 dash 8? So, okay, dot 20 is high as we go. RT AMD 64. Come here, boy. Should be. Vega 7. It's old enough to where it works with Debian 11. I was got that going for it. Um, it'll be interesting to see where the Navi 3 uh, APUs, how well they run, right? Should be. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm interested in that. Um, That's right. Um, what else? Uh, apt search RTIRQ. Install RTI. There we go. Good way to go. Um, um, default grab. And what else? Uh, QS, right, and, uh, is it, man, I don't remember if it is, uh, is it mitigation or mitigations? I think it's mitigations, isn't it? Don't do this, kids. This is bad. Uh, there. Now that I've said that. Am I? Mitigations equal off. And we don't need to do the AMD, IM, MU, or ASPM. ASPM you gotta do for Threadripper because they still haven't fixed that bug in the kernel even after all these years with the um, error reporting from the uh, PCI Express holes. M I T I G A T I O N. Okay. For some reason, my brain likes to misspell mitigations. That's why I'm checking everything. Uh, absolutely secure. Uh, this is this is the Fort Knox of systems, man. Uh, save modified buffer. Yeah. Um. Um. Update. Well, what is it? Just update grub on these guys. Or is it? Grub? I don't know, man. Um. Let me see. Uh, yeah. What am I trying to do here? Is my brain just not working? Uh, wait, we don't need to rebuild. Yeah, we'll just work the grub thing. That'll be fine, right? I think so. Why is my brain not working? Um, ran fs, right? Or is that co the command update? Init ran fs. Streaming, man. No.
update dash. <laughs> Jeez, Grandpa. Senior moment. Oh man, yeah. Dry coats for the cool kids. So this should uh, get us where we need to go. And I don't think there's anything on. Of course, we'll launch Steam and Run a little bit of track mania, but I think that's uh, I think that's it. Mm, so warm. All oh, right, we got to do that sensors package. Does anybody remember what website that uh, is? Mirror around. I think Mirror posted it last week. Oh, we got to fix this too. Um, for the sensors modules, LM sensors. And you know what? Okay, so that got us an RT. What do we want to do? Um, because. Eh, you know what? That's going to be good enough, right? 39.9. We don't need. Uh, why do we have eight sensors, though? <laughs> Is that something we should just roll with? What do you think? I think we might be good with that. We could do a backports kernel. I'm sure we had to do that. Backports. Thank you, Google. You've my ability to type. I don't even try anymore, man. Ever since Did You Mean showed up, and I use that in Google Docs all the time. Like I have no shame about it. Uh Uh-huh, I need to know where's the easy enable. Let's judge you how to shout. Are you good? Yeah. You got the right bits in you. Good on you. All right. Wrong password. Uh, we'll just dump this. Control Alt V. Boop. There we go. Bullseye back ports. Yes. What's going on? Something wrong with the Twitch? I don't know. Uh. Gaming live streams? Uh, Twitch died. Is this stream not working? Or just Twitch died in general? That would be unfortunate. Is it back? I don't know. I'm like looking on my end. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Is it just like Twitch being Twitch in general, or? Oh man, this is like... Yep.
Uh, so if you can hear me, I'm going to get up and do a bio break since we're just chilling out anyway for a minute, waiting on Twitch to untwitch. Uh, bio break. So two to three minutes. Give Twitch a chance. To un... There we are. It's back for Justin. Alright. Guys, keep me apprised. When I come back, let me know. Are we back? Maybe. Maybe not. With some stutter, so st <laughs> all right. Coming back to life at the speed of smell, baby. All right. No, when we last. Uh. Yeah, run system update. What I always forget how to do. No, we don't want to do that. Uh, I need a particular package. This is the. I never. I rarely use backports. So we're doing the thing where we use uh, the internet for our brain. Uh, so how do I do a search now? Um, so, uh, I don't know if it searches backports by default. Search uh, Linux image 6.0. Bullseye backports, yay! All right. Hey, okay, maybe we'll install that too. Thank you, Arthur. Excellent detective work. Uh, so six 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 zero 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 is. Let's uh, let's investigate this a little bit. And uh. Deb 11, that two. Deb 11, that six. So it seems that six is our current one. I don't have to do anything special to. Uh... Can I get away with. Let's see if we can just get away with this. Um, is there a signed Linux image? I think we got signed. It's already set up with signed. Right. Let's see if this works. Yeah. Let's see, that's what I was curious about, basically. Like, I've never, like... Like, do I even need to bother with that anymore? Right? I'm like, eh, it's a good, good time to play around, you know. Find out, right? Let's find out. All that missing firmware. And if you're new to Linux and you see that, that doesn't mean anything. Don't worry about it. You're not missing firmware. I mean, potentially you're missing firmware. Don't worry about that unless your video's messed up. If your video's fired, everything, games are playing, don't worry about it. All right. Uh, let's see if we got uh, we got Super Kernel 6.0 powers yet. That'd be neat. Uh, Let's reboot right about now. Yeah, I knew I could uh, Katana, I could do the apt search without having to specify uh, backports. I've never tried installing it without the extra, uh, you know, 
T moon glyph bullseye backport stuff. Multiple reasons. One, I rarely, if ever, use backports, but this being a uh, 5600G, you know, at least one kernel six for optimum bragging rights. Well, a burden. I'm easy to please. It booted. Oh, it got to a GUI? Awesome. Look at that. Yeah. And just so everybody's clear, like I've disabled the uh, Wi-Fi and onboard audio for this system. Again, it's it's uh, it's an appliance more than it is a PC. Rectangle's back, baby. Kernel 6.0 powers. Uh, what do we need to do? Uh, Light DM auto login. Where's that file? That's really all I wanted because I never remember where that dang thing is. All right. So what we're doing now is we don't want to have to log in every time. I want to be able to press a button. We're getting ready for a show or we're getting ready for track mania. Press button, have this thing go to desktop and from there launch scripts for me. No, we don't need the light DM login. Um, auto login user, auto login. User equals Jordan. I don't know. Boop, boop. And that should get us going. Let's have a look. This time it should just boot right. Auto login dangerous on a box that has no personal information on it. But you're right, Katana. You're 100% right. In any other particular situation, uh, somebody might be able to look at your uh, weird internet picture collection. But then let's be real. If I have physical access to your machine, you better have encrypted drives and you better not be around the house. And that house better not have pliers in it, because I can get that password from you. Boom! Now it boosts the desktop. How cool is that? Yeah. The illusion of security. I mean, it makes us feel better. I mean, it's like, a, you know, that's why we built houses and doors and stuff. I mean, it works for us psychologically. On a psychological level, so there's no reason to knock it. We might as well do it. I mean, if you really want to get secure, let's we could just pull this uh, ether Ethernet cable. This <laughs> pull the internet noodle out of the back. Eh, more, air gap it. No more secure. Uh, we should have Steam ready to go, right? Is it under games? Yeah, it is. Look at that. Mm. <laughs> See, if you try to, if you come at Mr. Alert with pliers, he'll challenge you to a pliers duel. He's not going to give up that uh, password easily. It's going to be pliers at noon. Update to Steam. We're going to install some Trek Media. Ah, uh, no. This is. We're going to log into my um, new Steam account just for the. Uh, which I don't remember the password to. Oh. Uh, Do I have a Swiss pocket knife? Yeah, I forgot to take the um, t take this out of the uh, simple queue for download restriction. So we're downloading at the speed of, I think, 30 megabits a second. That's what this thing's set at. I apologize for the wait. I just realized, it's like, that's only 300 megs. Why isn't that instantaneously done?
a multi-tool. Waiting's rough, man. I'm I'm impatient. This is gonna be fun to do. Uh, two six two six uh, five K. Hey. We are online. Uh, who wants to do a survey, man? Jeez. No, of course I'm going to do a survey. Is there B550M, VHD, Weefies, no touchpad, Ryzen 5, uh, Moon Glyphs, speed 2.894 gigajoules. All the stuff supported, baby. Yeah. There we go. We want to play. Oh no. Curses. I'm on Linux. I can't play the Windows game. However, let me show you how to do it. We're going to go to Steam. We're going to go to settings. Let's go to Steam Play. Enable Steam Play for other titles. And if you want to live dangerously, go with Proton Experimental or 705 if you're a normal person. And we got to give Steam a reboot. Steam is almost as bad as Windows, isn't it? You make any changes to Steam, there's like a 50-50 chance you get to restart Steam, isn't there? Now we need to change that. So let's go back into settings. Uh, interface. Uh, no. Wait. Yeah. No, I don't want that. Uh... I want you to take me to my library. Enlarge text, enable smooth. Uh, okay, I think that's good. There we go. My one account with my one game. Proton G. I break out Proton D G E. That's like my desperation. I guess we should call it G E Proton now. Um. Like, if nothing else works and I really, really want to see if I can play the game, then I'll break that out. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of... There's a really sweet, um... Like, St Steam Dark skin. The only reason I don't like it is because the uh, friends list thing isn't skinnable on Linux for some reason, and so it just completely breaks the coolness of it. So we gotta update the runtime, we gotta get some of that Proton 7.0 goodness, and of course we're gonna download some shaders pre-caching. Because we do things like that on Linux, because we're cool. Ooh, really pushing up at the limit, I'm in the red. I'm in the red in that queue. A legacy option. How warm you get? Uh, we're waiting on that. Uh, can I scroll back up to that thing? Right here and post it. What is it? Fred78. Why am I doing this? There's a web browser button right here. Click. What was it? Uh, F R E D seventy eight two ninety N C T. Oh, hey, Nuvatron, Nuvatron. If we can get all the extra. Um, Fancy bits. If I can find my cursor. 
Thank you. All right. Uh, right, so we got a... Apt install, we get it. Yes. So what we're installing now is just like a, you know, if we do sensors, it's kind of basic, but you know what? Gets the job done, but it doesn't give us like all the extra bonus things. Like what's the temperature of the NVMe drive and things like that. That is what this does. I need to be in my downloads directory. I don't need to be. I put stuff in my downloads directory in Debian because there's a downloads uh, directory in my home folder. And I'm like, yeah, that's just become the place where I dump things, right? the debt package, do I? Do we have a... Oh, right. I need the source sources and stuff, too. Pseudo control shift V. Yes. How are we doing? So slow. Uh, do I want... Do I dare... Do I dare you? Let me disable the, um, Q. Frankbox.exe. Why? Because I have to run one box through one. Okay. Right click. Disable. There we go. The Jordan box is now out of the simple queue, so we should get... Speeds slightly faster than smell. Not, not a whole lot, but... A little bit faster in smell. <laughs> a little bit, right? All right. Processing. QoS, well, I mean, there's a big, you know, speed jump going from, uh, 30 megabits to 680. Uh, hey, thought I clicked you. Oh, I'm on, wait, I'm on the right keyboard, right? What's going on? That's weird. Huh? Okay. That was odd. What are the moon glyph commands? Make DKMS install? I'm gonna be lazy. Copy paste. Ah, the little clicky button doesn't work on this mouse. Suit all the things. All right. <laughs> There we go. Look at that. Much better. Now we have all of our power. Our CPU is at 37. What is the uh, CPU fans at 14? It's a Noctua. Can't hear it. Uh, system fans at 14. It's slightly more audible, but you really still can't hear it until you put your ear up to it. Uh, yeah. The... Well, I guess that one doesn't have any sim on our M2. Yeah, all right, cool. We did a thing. Uh, where did Steam go? There it is. You shouldn't pseudo when building software? Uh, building it, no, but a DKMS module, a kernel module, I mean... You, you can type in sudo then, or you can type in sudo later. I mean, one of those things. We need to go into the launcher. 
Don't show this again. We're going to skip processing those shaders. See, Alan's got the right thing. That's what you're supposed to do. Alright, so we want this to run at 1920 by 1080 full screen. <laughs> How old is this game? Man, can you imagine? Can you imagine living in a future? I want you to think about this where you have one of those unfathomable uh, 100 megabit fiber connections. <sighs> oh, infinite bandwidth. Um, customize. Let's put this on nice. Sure. Well, I have to skip the Vulcan shaders because last time I did that, it caused everything to wind up to the point where it overloaded um, the battery backup in the rack back here. Which I don't think it'll do that again since I have a it down clocked, but I don't want to run the uh, the risk. So game player display size. So that's this is our spectator cam box. So I want to be able to have like a big chunky player name over everybody. Avatar name opponents uh, always visible. Um, peer to peer stuff should be fine. Network stuff uh, should be fine. Uh, audio, quality, normal, whatever. Yeah, this is the only thing I have to mess around with. Uh, probably like 8x. Oh, customize it. There we go. So how do we want to do this? Water reflections, car reflections. You know what, this will probably be okay. We'll take a look at it. Shader quality, very nice. Let's go with nice. Shadows are high. 16x, if we can get away with it. Let's try 8x, be realistic. Uh, blooms on medium, motion blur is on, not on. Okay, we're gonna save, and we're gonna exit. Because we need to go into settings and we need to go into end game and FPS counter. Give me those number digits on the top left and give me a high contrast green. So just make sure we're hitting 60. All right, let's give it a shot. We'll let them process. Let me see how much load it's putting on. It is at 98% load, 100% load. Will it finish before it flips out? No, it's back down to 80. All right, hey, there it goes. Whew. That was close. Yes, this is the spectate. Dude, it was at 99. Like, no joke. I just went and pushed the button on the... um. APC in the bottom of the rack to see what the load was in it. Yeah, it was legit at 99%. I'm like, uh oh, it made it. We did it last time and I didn't have everything um, underclocked, and that's what the beep, 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 it was flipping out. All right, online play. Ah, oh, man, I, if only there was a Linux. There we are. If you're ever wondering, if you're ever wondering, you can always join us. Look at that. There's a high, I put a hyperlink in it last night after we had the guy, uh, Beastie, uh, Ogie and Jill. We had, uh, one of my fellow countrymen show up and, and you know, so I was like, Hey, watch the show. It's like, just, you just wait for it. You're like, what are you going to try to get the password for free? It's like, so we're going to just drive guys. I'm like, yeah, you can right there. Um, so now you can just click on a hyperlink and it'll take you to our web zone. Like, hey, 
you know, this isn't to uh, like try to entice people to come, but yeah, if you're currently a uh, Twitch sub or better yet, one of our beautiful party patrons, yeah, you got a private track mania server where we hang out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's a community thing. Hang out, Linux and Laps. Talk about all kind of fun stuff. And have some friendly competition. And this is the perfect game if you don't like racing games, because it's uh, physics platforming on wheels. But we don't want to watch our empty server right now, because nobody's on. And they won't be until um Friday. Or they do practice. Like we did last night. Um, let's get into a heavy populated server. And see what our FERPs are. Loading, loading, loading. Okay, 70, 80, 70. That's got to be almost impossible to see. You guys at home. Now it's going to do the herky jerks while it's loading in everyone's car models, but I'm just looking at the frame rate. The left side is cut out? What do you mean? Oh, never mind. Okay. Can do. Yeah, that's staying above 60. I think that'll be fine for a spectator cam. But I do want to do a couple things while we are in this uh, graphics. Uh, what do we want to do? Reflections and vehicles. We, we don't need that too high. No motion blur. Frames. Limit it to 70. V-Sync is off. Triple buffering. And, you know, it's always interesting how, like, far we've advanced. Like, real-time SSAA. I was, like, reading the manual uh, and documentation for this. And, like, very costly. You should only enable this for video broadcasting and recording. Like, not intended, because it's going to tank your performance to such a point the game's not really playable. But even on like a 20 series, and especially with a 30 series, and unfortunately the 5600 you just can't handle it, uh, I can enable this and use it in real time, which is pretty dope. Alright. So now we're locked at uh, 70. Motion blurs off. Yeah. We should be good to go on that. Should be good to go. We do that. Then we can bounce out of here. Yeah. Um. Hundred and fifty in your thirties. Oh yeah. Thirty sixty can crush it. We get QJack set up. Yeah. Multimedia Pavu controls in there. Oh. Off. Input, output. Okay, all of that's good. Uh, what would be the easiest way? I need to transfer some files. Oh, there's a fixed regression and GC. Oh, there's a new NVIDIA driver out, but I don't see anything that's really cool going on in there. Um, Let me see, I need to SFTP in to the box from Threadbooper, so one moment as we take care of that.
Uh, SFTP. Jordan. Uh, oh, man. Six eight forty. I just remembered I'll have to update the SSH key, so that's not going to work just yet. Um, SSH. It is really, really big pain in the rear doing the uh, typing an IP address without a number pad. Oh, there's my number pad. Hey, number pad. Yes, I know it failed. I have to delete the key. Done. Yes, accept the new key. Good, we can be friends. Now I can hopefully. Oh. It's not going to work with that IP address. Let's give it an IP address that exists. My brain is just about 168.88. There we go. Password. Now I can take... Uh, let's go to the backup drive. Where is the Jordan PC? So we can copy over. Let's go to Jordan's. Uh, home, Jordan. Paste. Yes. I thought I had disabled the audio in BIOS, Mr. Alert, but apparently I did not, which is fine. Uh, so now we have this guy. Which reminds me that we need Google Chrome. Uh, thank you, Jordan. That is a valid point, but I always make sure to, that's like one of the installation options with uh, Debian's installers to have it start the SSHD server. Like, so I never have to worry about it. I know, I know security issues, probably something, brah. Uh, Chrome, download. Let's get Chrome in our lives. A 64-bit dev. Mm. Google, let me give you my personal information. Yeah, on Debian, uh, just for anybody else listening, it's like if you enable that warning, I guess, that's on by default. All right, uh, sudo apt install. Google, why don't we use dpackage? Because dpackage does not do dependency resolution, and this is the right way to do it. I use dpackage. I myself, if I know it's a package that isn't going to pull anything else in, and I know for a fact, like if I build OBS, when I build my OBS uh, Debian packages, they're mine. I know everything's there because I just built it on the system, so I don't worry about it, but on things like this, you know. And yeah, I would not have known to get lib u2f udev. Yet, well, I mean, I grew up typing uh, RPM uvh, man, and here's like force sometimes. So does that get us a uh, Chrome? Oh, what the hell do they call Chrome? It's like Chrome-stable or something like that, right? Keyring. Yes. No. Hey, Google-Chrome, that's what it's called. Uh, so, for future emergencies, 
We're going to change this to Google Dash Chrome. There we go. Save. Thank you for being super cool, Firefox. <laughs> you type comb, man. Google comb. Don't, don't knock it until you tried it, man. Google comb is the new hot thing from Tic Tac. Uh, so now we should be able to sync up uh, with... Uh, let me make sure. Is this thing right? All right, so what are we doing? What does this do? You might find yourself like, we find these are all moon glyphs. Fair enough. Uh, we use NetJack in the studio. All of these boxes, there's five PCs in here. Six now. And uh, none of them have sound cards in them, except for the DAW server, Jackbox. It doesn't even have sound card in it. It's got a thing called Format Converter in it. Army AIO Pro. Everything else is connected over the fiber network as virtual sound syncs, and uh, this is how we do it with NetJack. So what we're doing is we're going to start Jack in real time, synchronous, we're going to go to priority of 70, and we're going to say, hey, use the driver Net, which is NetJack 2's driver, MTU of 9000, one capture port, one playback port, INO is uh, MIDI, because we can also do MIDI over the network as well, and as you might have guessed, name is Jordan, L is latency, uh, it operates on latency 0 to 3 or 5 maybe. And that's just how much time you're going to give uh, the network uh, tell Jack to wait before if you get any like asynchronous packets and pops and skips and stuff. It's, it's the same as like a buffer size. And uh, A, for whatever reason, is the chosen flag for the IP address of the NetJack instance that you want to connect to because by default netjack tries to be clever and it is clever it auto discovers host and all that but that gets in my way so i just like to do a point-to-point -point connection and uh p you'll never guess what is nineteen thousand? what would nineteen thousand? that'd probably be a port wouldn't it yeah it'd be a port oh there's another thing we need to enable too that reminds me i'm glad uh we went through this i'm glad we had this talk everyone Uh, where's the edit connections, wired connection, uh, link negotiation, manual, 10 giga chomps, and MTU is, what is Jumbo Frames, 9,000? I think. Thank you, it is 9,000, okay. <laughs> There's... I don't know why I happen to remember the number 9,000. I don't know. For some reason, that's easy to remember, isn't it? Um, we do use jumbo frames on the network. Uh, well, on the switch, on this part of the network, we use jumbo frames. Save. And... Um, oh, yeah, there's like... Ridiculous. Uh, let me disconnect that. There we go. Yay. <laughs> we are connected. Um, so we should be able to run Go Jordan. Oh, okay. Look at that. Uh, it's connected to Jackbox. It's reported as rectangle. No MIDI. That's a Chrome complaining about why it failed to export buff to DMA. Yeah, whatever. Uh, latency, network latency, two cycle sample encoder. And that's another thing, man. I mean, uh, it, over the network, it doesn't re-encode it to Opus or anything like that. It just sends it as Jack data. There's no, uh, I mean, it's truly lossless audio. So you don't have to worry about any type of conversions or anything like that. So why is that neat? Well, I go to Pulse Audio Volume Control, and if I come back over here and connect AJLCC, look at that. Aha! That's right. Um, using Pulse Audio Module Jack, this is how we use these systems, because, you know, again, these systems have all of their sound disabled everything's digital in the studio 
So what this is doing is, uh, you know, I'm talking into the DAW and the DAW is sending it, of course, to this main box, you know, thread mover, but it's also sending it to all of the satellite PCs. So when we do a max minus, we can all talk to each other. And it would take this, you know, since we're seeing it in Pulse Audio, or you could use Pipewire or whatever. Well, actually, Pipewire wouldn't work in this particular situation. But yeah, then you can use it with your WebRTC client. And Bob's your uncle. That's how that works, man. Uh, what temperature are we at? Uh, CPU is 37. We're doing doing good with the lid on too, which is that, that's what I'm happy about. Um, what other like things? What are we? I, I got to do all of the audio stuff, which is quite frankly boring. <laughs> But I got time to do it. We might as well. We can hang out for a minute. Uh, side cam, top cam. What do we got? Uh, we need to create a. Do I? Of course I. Do I have a terminal open on the desktop? Are you kidding? That's silly talk, isn't it? Um. Of course I have a terminal open. The question is, oh, who used who uses Group Windows? Here's one of my rare complaints about uh, XFCE. By default, the grouped window thing is on. And it's not easy to disable. Like, I have to Google it every time I disable it. Um, okay, I need to do X window capture. X composite. And there's our Discord, everybody. Uh, sure, there we go. No one steal my keys. All right, we'll do a we'll do a little bit of audio hacking and cracking. It's not entirely level, but that's fun. Yeah, the group windows. Uh, like, let's say you have a terminal open, right? A terminal, and let's say you have. Uh, you're like me, that one terminal meets another terminal and they have a makeout session and then all of a sudden, like 10 minutes later, you have seven terminals open. So instead of having seven individual terminals open across your taskbar, you get the one. And when you click on it, you can pick which terminal. Grouped. That's what I mean. Maybe that explanation was able to make it less clear. Yeah, on the test bar. Yeah, that's like default behavior in XFCE. Like, ew. It makes it really annoying because it's like an extra click to get to the thing I need, you know, because you got to click there, then you got to click there, then figure out. Like, I, I just need a row, man. It's like group tabs, I guess. What am I looking for? Um, also, Jackbox system setup because we need to do all of those fun things to make it a super powerful audio toaster box. So that is our mission, and we have chosen to accept it. Um, I guess I can bring Discord back into where I can see it, can I? Since I don't have a OBS full screen anymore. Textual listing, KDE. Alright. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to leave app armor. So step one is we need to create a Pulse Audio config. And this is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, we make sure it's able to run real time. 70, limit 90, uh, nice level, negative 11. High priority, um, speaks float 10 for your resample method, two channels. <laughs> if everything goes horribly wrong, drop to 44.1, but default to 48k, which is going to do. And sample formats float 32 because that's what we're feeding it over the network from Jack. And that is our Pulse Audio config. Easy, easy, easy. Um, 
RTA or Q should be fine. I know, ATC, RT. Wait, is that's in default, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Default, RT. Um, sound, USB. I, I mean, I could put the network adapter in there, but this we're not doing anything crazy on this. Uh, yeah, all that's fine by default. No problems there. Um, where do we need to go next? Where do we need? Uh, we've already added our uh, thread IRQs, so we need to create a timer rule. We're going to do that. Um, like so, and that's going to let us add our high, pre high precision event timer and real time clock to the audio group. I'm going to say yes. We're going to do that, and we need to set a max user frequency, so. Um, we'll just say HPET 3072 on that. Good, good, good. Now we need to edit our um, 99 sys control. 99 after balloon. Let's go down to the bottom. What are we going to add? We're going to add VM swappiness and our max user watchers. We're gonna increase that to a reasonable size. There we go. We're done with that. And off to security limits, the wonderful security limits of Oz. End of file, no. Let's go back up. And we're gonna add audio, RT priority, and memlock unlimited. Yes, look at that. Done. And let's do some DMA latency rules. Because those, that's what the real, real party's about, isn't it? There we go. That'll hopefully clear that up. Are you going to give me the option to highlight that so I don't have to type it out? Thank you. Let's reload those rules. And of course, we do a triggering. Triggered. Yeah, that's it. We can do anything now. This is like the hole in the sheet. We can run Windows 11 on this thing now. Finally. Wouldn't that be the, um, spend a couple hours setting everything up? Only to, like, spool up a KVM with Windows 11 full screen and be like, all right, we're done. Um, pause? Whoa, wait, hang on. Man, um, uh, no, it's running fine. It's like 33 degrees. So... Install the side SSC and remove the NVMe. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, pretty straightforward, everybody. We did that uh, three hours. So three hours and like, you know, take 45 minutes of that for like, just, you know, putting the drives in and stuff like that. Oh. We're using 1.7 gigs of memory, so much. Uh, no, it should be ready for prime time. I'll be using, uh, we'll be using Rectangle tomorrow for the uh, Trackmania stream. It'll be a thing. It'll do the stuffs. Then uh, Saturday, which is kind of like easy mode for it, all things considered. All things considered for Linux Gamecast Weekly. Come watch us do that. That's fun. You see uh, the Burning Fool typing in chat? He's on it. He's a wacky guy. Uh, 
Do I want to add the, uh... Do I, though? Do I? Or do we want to add pressure stall information? I got LM sensors installed. Uh, display options. Boop. Yeah. We could do temperature. Uh, we can do uh, disk IO. That's another option in HTOP. You can see who's reading and writing to the disk, which is kind of cool. There's a bunch of stuff in uh, HTOP's just a cool program. It really is. Um, so I think that's going to wrap us up. I'm going to go button this guy back up and put him in, uh, put him back under the table. I might compile a kernel on it just to see if I can get it to do anything, you know, crazy on the thermal side, but I doubt it will. You know, if it's doing everything I need it to now. I'm not going to stress about it. I'm just, I'm just going to let it like chill out and do its own thing, and be the best appliance it can be, because uh, yeah. But hey, that's going to wind us down for tonight. Come hang out later. This is the lead-in show. I'm pretty sure next week, next Thursday, I will not be rebuilding the same PC again. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully that'd be dope. Um. This is a lead-in show for 7.30 tonight, Borderlands 3, with the Burning Fool, and I think DSN Joe's going to be part of that as well, and usually some other people show up. Borderlands 3 is kind of fun to watch. I'll be back here on Twitch. Uh, just check the schedule. It's there doing the stuff, and uh, Friday, I'm back with the Filthy Casuals. Linux and Labs come hang out with us. Uh, participate if you'd love it. We got eight, nine, ten, so we got like four spots that are available that you can pop in and uh, do a points match with us. That'll be 7.30. Again, that's on schedule, filthy.lenixgamecast.com if you want to participate in our retro gaming racing night. Saturday's the big show, the one that started it all over 10 years ago, Linux Gamecast Weekly. 8.30. Check that Twitch schedule again. It's there. And there all of that. You get notifications on Twitch if you want them. And uh, that'll round out the week. I'll round out the week. So, yeah, I'm going to go button this stuff up and reroute all the cables, plug it in, and have the PSU die or something like that. Keeps things interesting. Cool, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. And, um, yeah, if you get any questions or anything like that, like drop them in Discord uh, if you're a Twitch sub or a patron. We get them there. We're there the other six days of the week. Good night.